Yeah, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. And today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. This week's podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. I just told you that, duh. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all on your terms. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's start the show. Hezzy! What's up, man? What's happening, Hezzy? How was your week, Hezzy? What? How was your week? Why are you doing that African accent at the end of it? What accent? That's not an accent, Yes, man. you did. No, I wasn't. Hezzy. Hezzy. Uh, that's, Hezzy. That's, I feel like that's kind of African. <laughs> what is this coming from? <laughs> Take one trip to fucking Mozambique. I'm African. Yeah, that's a native accent right there. It's my native tongue. <laughs> Word to try called Quest yeah. of De La Soul. All right, listen, don't worry about my week. I want to know about uh, your week. You, I want to talk about Nikki Haley, but first I want to talk about this Breakfast Club rollouts <laughs> that you guys did. How you feeling? Oh, uh, I feel good. Yeah. Do you yeah. like just, because you don't get to toy with the media. You don't get to toy I with the media. I do it all the time. But not like this. This was like. This is the first time I ever told people I told them toy with them. <laughs> oh, you're saying all the other times you've been doing But this was like beautiful. Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. I mean, the hardest part about stuff like this is just getting everybody else to be patient. Yeah. Because you know me, I can slow walk it. I, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I can slow grind a goddamn troll all day long. Like, now, have any people acknowledged you toying with them? Uh, I haven't paid attention. I, I really haven't. You just checked out. Because uh, yeah. you paid attention before. I paid attention enough to be able to get enough of those clips to put it together <laughs> yeah, for that trailer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because so you were just collecting the lines that people were saying for a month? Oh, it was three weeks. When I, well, yeah, it was three weeks. Because the first thing I was, I, when we came back from break, from Breakfast Club, uh, from the holidays, I was just like, well, we haven't acknowledged just, as, just announcing it, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We haven't acknowledged it. So why not continue to play stupid? And so I already knew that playing stupid would take a life of its own. Like I literally, I told I, that Taylor and all them. I told you, I'm like, I said, listen, if we play stupid, it's gonna take a life of its own. And then you know, I'm like, okay, after this week, it'll pro it'll catch on. And you know, our digital team was like, should we put out clips? I'm like, no, let uh, them find it on their own. So they found us playing stupid on their own. What's the example? What's the first thing? Me just acting like, yo, man. Last year we was rotating guest hosts, you know, and 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 I thought we were supposed to start the new year with a new co-host. What happened, right? Knowing that, not acknowledging anything, not acknowledging Jess, not acknowledging. Is she on the show at this point? No. So she's not even sitting in. It's just no. you and Envy. She was, she was always supposed to start February. <laughs> she was all, literally always supposed to start February fifth, literally. Like, that was Jessica Robin Moore's start date. Did you start the play when she announced at, like, some show that she's... I was on vacation in Zanzibar. No, but I mean, Zanzibar. was that the start of it? Like, did you say, oh, announce this, and then we're going to make it seem like they took it back or that they didn't agree with no, it? No, that was oh. real. Oh. oh, so she actually... <laughs> <laughs> no, well, well, that was real. But that actually helped. I thought it was it, great. It helped it. It was great. It was like, yo, because it shows people, it shows you how much people care mm. about being in that position. But I mean, the whole past three weeks of the rollout showed you how much people care about that, that particular position. And it shows you that Jess is absolutely the one, which we all, which you already knew. You know mm. what I mean? Funny is first when she did that comment and she taking photos with her. <laughs> Isn't everyone's going crazy? Oh, that, that's that's yeah. That that was step three without even trying. First step was us. First first step was just announcing that, but that was real. Second step was us coming back acting clueless. Third step was me like, oh, I'm gonna do what every other celebrity does, because you know when 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 you when you when you start playing clueless, right, and that goes viral, people start hitting you. So all the different outlets and stuff start hitting you. So when TMZ hits you, it's like, oh, meet me, meet me at the radio station <laughs> Tuesday at ten o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Meet me at the radio station Tuesday at 10 o'clock. So I wear, make sure I wear my nice coat, you know what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> make, sure I, make sure I wear my nice coat, you know? Walk out the door, act surprised. Full Tubi. <laughs> Charlemagne. Full Tubi. What's up with Jess? <laughs> huh? That huh? 
That hum, man. Yeah, you that got the hum, acting down. That hum. Okay, so. You know? And so, <laughs> so I already know what that's going to do, TMZ, right? Boom, so that goes out. And then um, everything else was just like, I, I had another thing that nobody caught on to. But I'll tell you how just the universe works. So first, yeah, it was just announcement, which was real. Then uh, me acting clueless, me and Envy acting clueless, totally acting. TMZ, totally acting. And then the very next week was um, I had the throne sitting in the studio. I remember that. <laughs> oh, yeah. But so. nobody I th nobody really picked up on it. I just had it sitting in there. On B if we were still on BT, I think they would have. You think so? Yeah. How many things do you think you did that didn't get picked up on? It was just that one. Okay. And then, but it, it still ended up working out because me and uh, uh, Envy was having a conversation about Mary J. Blige and SZA, right? So that ends up going viral. And so we're sitting around and Jess is like, I should post this and shit on y'all. I'm like, yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it. Hmm. <laughs> right? And then what did she post? She was just like, they're stupid. These motherfuckers hell. is trash. Yeah. You know. Like, um, something like, about old heads or something old like that. Yeah. DJ yeah. shut up. And then people start going, oh, shit, she lost Oh, she's them. mad. Yeah. Yeah. Salty yeah. Yeah. She's salty because she's mad. She's salty. Oh. <laughs> we sitting there in the photo shoot laughing our yeah. asses off. <laughs> crying, laughing at the idiocracy <laughs> that exists on social media. But what, what it's really- It's amazing the confidence that people will say things that they have absolutely- Bro. Yeah. Unbelievable. And but I know we do that for a living too, but- <laughs> No, it's different it's with us. amazing. No, it's different <laughs> with us. Okay, well, why is it different? Because we're brilliant idiots. Because we're professional idiots. But we're not acting like we know. These, no, no, no. These people are acting like they know. And these are just our theories. These people are literally saying, I heard, and oh. my sources oh. say, oh, yeah, 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 and yeah. this is what I know. Got it, got it. Like, that, no, that's the difference. Yeah, we're just talking shit. It's, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so that happened. And then Cam Newton, that was real. Cam comes on Breakfast Club. Cam asked what Jess was. We play Clueless, right? Oh, that, wow. that was real. Beautiful. But now you can't stage that kind of stuff. And then after that, it's just like, all right, everybody relax. We got enough. Everybody be patient. I know it's getting crazy. I know you feel like saying fuck some of these people. Just relax. Monday at 9 o'clock, it will be all worth it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It will be all worth it. And you know what I'm saying? You let, your, you let, you let people do the talking for you. And it, even the people on this... Um, now, what do the trolls do? What do you mean what do the trolls do? Like, after you do something like this, where you have manipulated all these people, and they're going on their platforms, and my sources say, and yeah. I know exactly what's going on, and blah, blah, blah. What, uh, do you think, do they ever come out and be like, yo, I was got, or do they just move on? None of them will, none of them will admit they was wrong. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? None of them will admit they got got. They, some of them, are, I haven't seen anything, but I'm sure some of them will probably try to come up with other conspiracy theories. Yeah. You know, I think I saw somebody say... Uh, she was uh, the, originally the, fired, but then they brought yeah. her back. Yeah, this was a, it was a breach of contract, yeah, and they yeah. had to bring her back. Yeah. Like, shut the fuck. Y'all still, y'all not, not tired of being loud and wrong? Shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, there was, there was people that I saw say it. There was like people that said, that they was, oh, this is a stunt. Like, I, I added them. Uh, I mean, it was a stunt. It was a stunt. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So they got it right. Salute to Claudia Jordan and uh, my, uh, Al, Al Reynolds, Al Reynolds, you know, like they were yeah. discussing it on uh, Claudia, on the Fox Soul show. And they was like, I think this is a stunt. That's why we, wow. that's why we used them last wow. before we revealed, yes, it was a stunt. Thank you, everybody, for the free promotion. <laughs> we, we appreciate it. I mean, just genius. But think about this, right? Just we know psychological operations happens. We know informational warfare happens. Imagine what they're doing to us on the highest levels, yo. Yeah, if you can do this to the whole <laughs> hip hop blog community, what can the government do to us? My God, did you? See, oh, you didn't see that NBC News article that came out yesterday? No. Oh my God, About Chris, what? I sent it to you, right, Chris? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the NBC News article came out yesterday. Hold on, this shit is a. Uh, oh, Fake news, YouTube creators target black celebrities with AI-generated misinformation. Some channels pivoted from tech review videos to misinformation about black, ce black celebrities bringing in millions of views. NBC News did a whole thing about it. How it was just these people on YouTube who create these accounts, they take like, you know, like, like for example, they use Diddy for an example. They had a picture of Diddy getting arrested back in the day. And it was like, Diddy arrested for such and such and such and such. And it gets millions of views or like they'll have like AI generated content of Steve Harvey saying different things. Like they do that with so many people. Like I've, I've done digital forensics on shit that's on YouTube about me before. Where that shit came back from, Chris? Where was the majority of it coming from? India or someplace like that? Yeah. There, there was an article in the Times this weekend too. I mean, it ranges from posts that get millions of views to posts that 
generate a couple hundred dollars, but it's worth it. So they, they profile a the story. There's a 19-year-old kid who went to a private school in Manhattan on New Year's Eve. He got run over by a train. I think he fell under the tracks ay, ay, ay. in Manhattan. But they picked it up in India. They had no. What they do is they search for anything that's trending, right? So I guess a lot of people in his circle in New York were talking about it. So they picked it up, and they realized that people wanted more information about it. So they essentially just wrote a fake story saying he'd been stabbed in the Bronx in a train station. What? <laughs> yeah, but they put it out, and it picked up traction. And, you know, like his friends and parents got very upset because that's not what happened. Absolutely. He fell onto the tracks. You know, I, don't, I can't speculate, but, like, he was run over in Manhattan. He wasn't stabbed in the Bronx. But Did the he guy, die? Yeah. Oh. 19-year-old kid. But wow. the guy in India was like, hey, man, like, I made 70 bucks off of this. Oh, he's like, I need the views. 70 fucking yeah. dollars. And he's like, I saw the people were looking about this story. There was no other information. I couldn't find anything. So Did I, it seems like a lot of people get shot and killed in the Bronx, so that's what I said. Did you see the shit Rogan posted? Nah. What did Rogan post? The fake deep of him? Say what? It was the fake deep of him? No, this is... A deep fake. What I said? <laughs> fake deep. Look at this. Deep fake of him? <laughs> so... Let's expose the mainstream media today. To the most posted article by The Hill. Notice this picture. Protesters outside the New York courtroom with anti-Trump signs. Not even New York. How does this pic make you feel? If you love Trump, this may upset you. The weaponization of the justice system. If you hate Trump, this may vindicate you, knowing there are people out there that understand your cause and protesting on your behalf. Either way, you are manipulated to feel that way. I watch By this. the fake news. Check out this video. This is the actual video of this picture. <laughs> It's like three people. There's three it's people there. Two protesters. Paid, and 30 mainstream media 30 accounts, media accounts filming it so that they now can post. This out. Did a quick reverse lookup on this picture. Can you see how many news articles this picture was used all Insane. over the world? Informational warfare. I mean, I'm still scrolling. The same exact fake pic. Used to manipulate your mind. I saw people get mad at Nancy Pelosi this week because Nancy Pelosi was on... Uh, they could never get mad at her. She was on CNN and she was <laughs> talking about how, um, you know, uh, she was saying how, like, when it comes to Israel and Palestine, a lot of this, uh, the stuff you see as far as protests and stuff, she was like, it's Russian propaganda or something like that. And they got mad at her. I'm sure it's some truth to that. I'm, I'm, I'm positive it's some truth to Every that. Every country in the world that is our enemy will do anything they yes. can to support yes. any sort of disagreement mic, Chris. Yes. going on in America. It doesn't matter if it's Black Lives Matter versus Blue Lives Matter. It doesn't matter if it's Israel-Palestine. Anytime there's Border. friction here, yeah. they're going to put some fucking gas on play, it. Play that clip, Taylor. Yeah. yeah. It just... People are so outraged because... It looks like she's undermining the movement because yeah. they're like, no, we're here. We're here to support. It's a yeah. real movement. Yeah. Yeah. But like you said, they're pouring gas on it. A hundred percent. As we would do One in every other challenge. country as well. Hmm. If there's a movement happening in we Iran. do it. Of course. I know people who work in the plan. military on the PSYOPs departments. You, you are a liberal cuck. What do they call you? <laughs> what do they call you? You are a liberal shill. You are a liberal shill. I, you do work I, for the Democrats. I, but I know, I literally know people who work in PSYOPs in the military. Really? Can we get them on the podcast? Play it, Taylor. Nah, they can't. But we have to think about what we're doing. And what we have to do is try to stop the suffering and gossip. This is women and children, people who don't have a place to go. So let's address that. But for them to call for a ceasefire is Mr. Putin's message. This, and this is what I don't understand, right? Because I, I, all I heard was nuance. Do people not understand nuance no, this, anymore? No, no, this is not exactly that. I think that this is propaganda too. She's saying that calling for a ceasefire is Putin's message. And it's like, I'm pretty sure the people there would like there to be a ceasefire. Absolutely, I'm pretty 100%. sure the people who have families there would like there to be a ceasefire. So I, I think that this is propaganda to support. She's obviously pro-Israel in this situation. And, well, of course, she's not going to be pro-Hamas. But, I, I, yeah, I think that there's some propaganda going on here. So but I, do agree I can with understand what she, the pushback. Yeah, I do agree with what she said about... She, she believes that some of this stuff is spontaneous and organic. But if you're, for example, if the government, if America's government is supporting Israel in this conflict, of course, any country that's going against America is going to support 
any support of the opposition. And Absolutely. in this case, that is, I guess, cease fire because you can't say, yo, I support Hamas. Absolutely. Yeah. But do you believe what she said about how some of this is spontaneous and organic, but some of it is, yeah. you know, probably orchestrated by Russians? Yeah, I mean, I... I think that they're putting gas on it. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah, that yeah. orchestrated means that they're the ones that have started it, put it out there, and it was their inception. Yeah. I just think that Iran, Russia, any other country is putting gas on it. China's probably putting gas on it. Yeah, I was... I was telling Charlemagne, like, I was in when I was in Taiwan, it was right before their big election, which China was very much trying to sway through social media. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to a guy who is pretty high up and knows things in global politics. And I was like, are you concerned about that? He was like, why are you asking me if I'm concerned about it? Aren't you concerned about what's happening right now in America? And I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, Russia and China are the ones pouring gas on what's happening in Gaza. He's like, the whole world sees that. You're asking us about Taiwan. The entire world is looking at the U.S. and camp. He's like, obviously what's happening is terrible, but if you look at this from a global political perspective, the U.S. interests are not with Iran and Russia. Of course, yeah. And that's who's behind this. He's yeah. like, China doesn't even have to do anything in this. Yeah, because Iran and Russia are going to pay for the whole thing. Right. China's just sitting back and laughing. So, yeah. But it is difficult, right? Because I think a lot of people, you know, I who doesn't want a ceasefire? Andrew's theory is absolutely right. right. This is really happening. Yeah. It's just that people are throwing gas on an already out of control fire. And then it creates its own momentum. But yes. the thing that's so confusing to me about the Israel-Palestine conflict is that like, I always ask people, I ask people, especially people who are, you know, very supportive of the Palestinian side. I'm like, like what, what do Palestinians want? I always ask this, like, what do they want? And I can't get an answer from anybody. It's not a two-state solution? That's not the answer I've been getting. And I go like, give me, just tell me what it is. Is it, is it 1967 borders? Like, just, just give me what they want. Because I hear a lot of ceasefire, right? But there was a ceasefire on October 6th. So I'm just like, what, what exactly is the goal here? What do you want? We don't have no Palestinians here? This is a very diverse studio. Well, here, here's, here's the issue. It, we got it, a Jewish man right there. No, no, no. I think Puerto Palestinians Rican. know, and I think Palestinians Black, there know. Italian. And, <laughs> Italian. <laughs> All white guys are Italian. Uh, but no, I think the tricky thing here is that the supporters, I think the supporters don't know. And it's becoming very Black Lives Matter, the movement, in that the supporters are out there supporting because they think that it's the right thing to do. They see the videos of what's happening right there and they're like, I wanna be on the right side of history. I think there's part of, then there's a lot of just like, you know, liberal white people that are like, I want a virtue signal and show how good a person I am. But you ask them, you're like, what do Palestinians want? They can't give you an answer. They'll say ceasefire, but besides that, they'll be like, how do we stop this? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and I would be very concerned about that if I'm on the Palestinian side, because what happened with Black Lives Matter? White people are out there supporting all these lesbians and shit with their fucking pink hair, throwing their <laughs> fist up. And then you go, what does Black Lives Matter want? And then people are like, uh, I don't know. I just think Black Lives Matter. It's like, well, yeah, of course, we all do. But what do they want? And then you saw what happened with the organization. But wouldn't the answer to that question be solving the crisis that's going on in the area? So it's like they don't know guys, exactly guys, what they guys, want. They just crisis want. crisis has been going on for a long time. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's so it's like, not going to be but solved you asking them that the next few can't. months. No, they I'm can't asking answer. what do Palestinians want? If you don't even know what the people you're supporting want, how can you support it? They just want a ceasefire. You got to talk to people who know it. Like, why do they want a ceasefire? They want them to stop dying. Like, yeah, they, they just, yeah, dying. that's the So they're thing. out there to be like, hey, I don't want people to die. I just want everybody to know I don't want people to die. So then you're out there for yourself. I guess my point is if you don't, want, if you don't know what the people in the conflict want, you are there for you. I understand what you're saying. You're not there for but, them. You're there for you but, but, because you get to go, look how good a person I am. I, I don't want anybody to, nobody wants people to die. There, there's a, there's a short-term solution and a long-term solution. Mm -hmm. The short-term solution is they want to cease fire now. They want to stop, they want people to stop dying, right? Yeah. On both sides. You, yeah. you, you don't want to see Palestinians die. You don't want to see, you know, people in Israel die. But then there's a long-term solution, which is how can we all get along in this region and mm -hmm. make sure things like this stop happening? Of That's course. what I would think. Yeah. I would hope, but what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of virtue signaling in that I've asked these people that are so passionate, yet they don't even know what the people they're supporting want. And when I see that, I'm not saying this is every single person, but when I see that, I start to go, 
wait a minute, are you doing this to support them? How can you support people if you don't know what they want? Just say and you if, don't believe in them, show. Say you don't believe in these people. Son, I don't. You don't believe no, in them? No, I do believe in them. I believe, you, you think that I believe they're, the, they're using those people you, you believe, so they can look cool online in the same way they did it with Black Lives Matter, guess, the same way they did it with Ukraine. The Me Too the movement. They, with the Me Too movement. Yeah. It's, it, it, whatever, movement the trend, whatever's trendy at the moment. I so they hop in from trend to trend to trend, and it's like, you. nah, you're using the deaths of fucking innocent people so you can look like a good person online? That get, makes a very sour taste in my mouth. Go see how they felt about turtles. <laughs> when uh, when the fucking uh, when climate, climate change, change was the hot thing. Exactly. If you go see oh, these, the, the I'm straws serious. In the nose. That's what I'm telling you. Did you stop using re uh, plastic straws? I'm telling you. I go. did. Of course you did, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> they don't work the, as well. He's though. one of the fucking problems. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the fucking problem. <laughs> Listen, I don't have a problem with people who care. You know what I mean? Like, I a problem it's a good cause. It's a great I mean, cause. I want people yeah, to it's stop a great cause. I have a problem if, if you only care about you. If you care about other people, yes. But if you don't even know what they want, then how can you care about them? You just care. I think some people, not all, yeah. I think there are some people out there who just care that they look like a good person online. And that's what they're showing up. You saw those. They put the black square up probably exactly. during Black Lives Matter. I white, get what you're saying. But all the white bitches saying. that would go to the Black Lives Matter march for two minutes, take a picture, and then leave? Remember <laughs> they did that? People are doing this. I understand what you're I saying. I saw them singing at the Holland Tunnel. I didn't show you the video I took. No. They holding hands. <laughs> In front of the Holland Tunnel, I got a video singing this song. Cease fire now, cease fire now. So I got in my phone right now. I got a dude trying to go to Jersey. Hey, yo, fuck the cease fire. Let me go back to Jersey. No. Yes. Let me see. Hey, 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 hey yo, we in America. Oh, I need my to go God. home. By the way, we don't talk about those people enough. Those people don't care about what's going on because they are dealing with their lives. They're trying to survive. They're trying to keep food on their table, a roof over their head. Tell me, I got to take this serious, yo. You think these people care about <laughs> You made it sound like I thought it was going to be thousands of people. No! It's like, but it's, it's, this is like the video in front of the Trump But they're stopping people from getting on uh, the tunnel. They're not letting people go to the tunnel, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Listen, man, it's a great... Listen, I get it. It's a great call, but I understand what Andrew's saying, too. It is some people who... It's the, it's the people who chase the trends that make it bad for the real activists who are really out there that, on the front what, line. There are people who really do care. They know what now, the what you, I get people it. want. They know about the future. They care about this. They're not yeah. just doing it for virtual sake. They've actually been supporting this, this cause their whole life. Yeah. They've literally been... Their whole life, this is what they've dedicated their life to. And then there are other people who are using that shit so they can look cool online, so they can be this woke progressive person, but don't give a flying fuck about all those people that are dying. And to them, I'm like... Al, you turn your head side to side, but I'm talking about you. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not posting that. What are you talking about? about? <laughs> no, but I, I do think that you can see what's happening over there, feel bad about it, and think that if I post, at least I'm doing something. At least I'm getting the word out there. That's true. And then you apply pressure to your politicians who what are supposed word? to, because if if a politician seeing no, everybody word, on their though? grant, what are you saying what, to what, ceasefire? What, I get what that's what, No, but that's what the don't word. Even know what word they getting out there? No, to ceasefire. Like they want. They trying to get pussy off Palestine, bro. They, they trying to get. I, I, to I, get don't, th DMs. I don't think so. They trying to get some DMs. <laughs> oh God! Thank you for your support. Oh word! Oh that's what's up. Trying Shorty. to get pussy Let's off Palestine. Let's go out to dinner. We won't eat pork. What, you know what I mean? Like, they're trying to uh, do some... I, I, oh, I, 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 I see what both of y'all are saying, because it's, it's, it's a nuanced thing. I walk in my neighborhood, I would see Black Lives <laughs> Matter fucking posters. The second the Ukraine shit popped, take it down, Ukraine poster, uh, Gay Week or whatever it is, yeah, rainbow no, poster. I get, it, it's I get a, it. It's a costume these people wear. I get what you're and saying. They, and that's not to say there aren't real people that are about that fucking There's life. There's plenty of real people, but those people, the people you're talking about make it bad for the real Yes. These singing activists. ass motherfuckers. Yeah, 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 yeah. With their faces covered, all of them, fuck out of here. <laughs> and I get what Alex, Alex is saying that whenever there's a call to action, when people are sitting around and they feel like they want to do something, this is the easiest thing to do, yeah. bro. The easiest thing to do. Thank you. The easiest thing to do is pick up a phone, put a black square, Tweet something about, you know, whatever. I get it. I understand and then what you're I have, I have a lot of empathy for the Palestinian people who are like, we just need support. 
anybody support. So they're going to take these people's support because they're like, yo, we just need support. I sure, I'm sure they're Not very even grateful. realizing. And Absolutely. I'm sure black people, y'all felt the same way when it was like, yo, people are murdering us. Can we get some support? And then these white bitches are out there at the, and you're like, okay, white bitches are supporting us. And then you see them leave the, 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 the walk <laughs> immediately. And you're like, oh, well, hold on one second. How long were they at that walk? <laughs> you know what I mean? You get a little resentful. That's so crazy. No, I get what you're saying. I get it. You're not, uh, listen, I get it. It's if, very hard to get people to see the nuance of all situations. Like, I was just having this conversation about what's going on at the border because and we talked about it last week, but I can't, I, I what's think. What's going it, on at the border? I, I think yeah. it's changing now because yeah. remember, even, you know, last week you was talking about how it was MAGA messaging, right? Yeah. But what I'm trying to explain to people if you talk to these activists in Chicago, if you talk to people in New York, black people, it's not about that. All they care about is the fact that these people are getting resources just getting in this country, and it's resources that they don't have. Yeah. It's really just that simple. But you'll have different organizations who can sympathize with the people at the border, yeah. but you don't sympathize with black people in Chicago. That's, you don't sympathize with yeah. people in New York. 100%. Who, 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 don't, who, who aren't getting the resources so they're getting, who yeah. are being inconvenienced. And it's just like, why can't we ever see the totality of all these it things? sounds like what you're saying is America first. Yes. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. We got him. I, I, I literally said that. I literally said that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's stop and pay some bills and salute Keatum, man. Thank you, Keatum, for sponsoring the Brilliant Idiots this week. Uh, they partnered with the Brilliant Idiots and Flagrant over at Keatum. They got Delta 8, Delta 9, and Delta 10 hemp derived, federally legal, and packs of blissful buzz within each bite, all right? You're gonna love the taste. If you like edibles like I do, you're definitely gonna love these. You're gonna love the high and no need for a medical card. Right now, you can go to shopketum.com and use code IDIOTS for 25% off your entire order. And if you're not sure about Delta THC products, Ketum has an offer just for you. They know you're gonna love their gummies, crispy treats, disposable pins, and free shipping is also available. So head on over to shopketum.com and type in code IDIOTS at checkout for 25% off. That's shopketum. K-E-T-U-M dot com and code idiots for 25% off your Keatum stash today. Let's enjoy the rest of the episode. All right, uh, we got any church announcements, Schultz? Yo, um, yes, we do have a church announcement. Man, shout out to everybody that watched Underdogs, man. Mm. Number one movie on Prime right now. Shout out to Big Snoop. Yo, how old were you supposed to be in that movie, yo? Two ages. Hmm? Two ages. So they have me when I'm young. Thanks for watching. And then they have, <laughs> and then they have me when I'm, when I'm like 20 years later. No, I haven't. I'm watching. I'm, I'm planning to watch it this weekend. I just I saw the clip of you looking old though. Yeah, I love that. I love that sentence he just said. What? I'm gonna plan to watch it this weekend. No, I'm, I am. I'm not gonna watch it this weekend. But this weekend, I will plan, plan to watch to. it. No. And then maybe in the future. You know, you know what fucked me up? Watch. I'm gonna tell you what fucked me up. Yeah. I went to go watch it. This weekend. Yeah. And then I saw that the Marvels was on Amazon Prime, and I hadn't watched the Marvels yet. What's the Marvels? The Marvels with, uh, with the, the, Bree, the, the women from Marvel. But I'm watching, I'm well, watching it this week. They gave the girl one to Amazon? Huh? <laughs> I'm watching it Disney, this weekend. Disney didn't want that one? No, no, no. It's on Disney. It comes out Disney. No, next week it comes out on Disney. Oh, it's on yeah, Amazon? I, I didn't realize Prime Video be having like all the movies like still that's in theaters and shit. Oh, I didn't Only know if that they either. have a deal with them. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah, so I saw it out there. I'm like, oh shit! I thought it was on Disney Plus. So I watched it, and then I'm watching the Underdog this weekend. Thank you, bro. No, I'm watching it this weekend. Thank you. Let me tell you how you just pitched my uh, film. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I was gonna watch your shit. Then I saw some shit I wanted to watch more. So, <laughs> no, 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 no. Then, then I saw the Marvel movie that did the worst ever yeah, in the Marvel worst? history. That shit was good, though. <laughs> Man, stop. Y'all friended on that shit. I watched that shit. I was like, why do people hate this Yo, shit? Support Snoop, bro. I'm definitely worried. I'm supporting you and Snoop <laughs> and Kenya. Scott. Yeah, okay. shout out to Kenya, man. Who who um who did a CGI kiss in this one? Show. Yo. <laughs> Yo, I need to give I need to give some good drama with this one, man. Shit, I wish I had some good, but I don't even have any good behind the scenes. I really don't have. Come any on, good. man, make the movie pop, yo. You right, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Hold on. Hold Everybody on. started buttoning it up around show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't give me nothing, bro. They don't give me nothing. <laughs> right. Yo, right, Benzino. Shout out to Benzino. Benzino had one of the best usages of the word cracker I heard in a long time. Ooh, give me. He called Eminem a cracker on crack on his new diss record. We, oh, really? You should insert this. The funniest shit, right? We're talking. First of all, I thought the diss record was dope. I ain't go front. I was like, damn. I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you're like, you're not expecting it to be dope, yeah. right? But then you hear it and you're like, 
don't know. And Benzino kind of got off on this a little bit, right? Mm. So he called him a crack on crack. Man, I was laughing about it on Breakfast Club. So under the video of the Breakfast Club video, somebody goes, Charlamagne is so fucking racist. What if I said to him, uh, a, 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 a nigga on Snickers? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> sure. a, a cracker on crack, a, snick, a nigga on Snickers. What the fuck? It don't make no sense, yeah. but that shit was funny. Yeah, that when I funny. read it. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> a Damn, nigga bro. on Snickers. As if niggas is addicted to Snickers. So, um, so wait, Eminem and Benzino are beefing again? Again. Maybe they never stopped. We just, uh, we just started paying attention again. <laughs> um, I want to tell everybody, make sure you go out there and pre-order Alice Randall's book, man. Alice Randall has a book coming out called My Black Country, A Journey Through Country Music's Black Past, Present, and Future. Uh, it is the next release off my book imprint, Black Privilege Publishing with Simon & Schuster. It will be out uh, on April 9th, 2024, but you can pre-order right now. I actually just went to go look at it. It's the top new release in country music in, in pre-order. So uh, thank you to everyone. Everybody who's been pre-ordering uh, My Black Country by Alice Randall, okay? I saw T-Pain talking about how he uh, has written a bunch of country songs and he didn't even, uh, he never used to put his name on it, on the credits, because of the racism that exists in country music. So he was Whoa. like, man, I'd rather get these checks so good I don't music, want nobody to know music. I'm writing these records. Where it come from and what style it come in. All the people I know like feel like it's not cool to listen to other genres of music. Country music is where I get all my harmonies. Country and gospel music, that's where, that's where all my har harmonies come from. I don't wrote a lot of country songs. Stop taking credit for it because as, as cool it is to see your name in those credits and like that, the racism that comes after it is just like, I'll just take the check. <laughs> Don't put me on that. Yo, T-Pain is the man, check, bro. bro. No, I Never mind, though. Though. You know what I mean? I wonder if that racism still exists, though, because I, when I think about, you know, black country, of course, the first person comes to my mind is Darius Rucker. Yes. 843, Charleston, South Carolina, Let's all day. Hootie and the fucking Blowfish. Wagon but then, Wheel. But then also, there's been so many dope black artists that have been coming out in country over the last couple of years. Hell Kane yeah. Brown comes to mind. Met Kane last year at the iHeartRadio Music Festival. Yep. Um, look up some others, Taylor. Also, uh, <laughs> That's funny. what's the other guy's name? Jelly Roll? Yeah, he's, no. a, he's an honorary. No, but shout out to Honor. Jelly. Say Pride. Nah, what's that motherfucker? Ain't no Pride name? in country music, Chris. Ain't Ugh. no mountain. Oh, Charlie, huh? Charlie Pride Black? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's older though. I'm talking about like new artists. Yeah, yeah, like new people. Kane Brown is new. Um, Little Nas X. He not country. You think he's country? He started, Why not? He started his country. Oh, let me look it up. I was just looking at this shit this morning. But was Morgan uh, Wallace? Yo, 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 yo. Morgan Wallace. You, this guy. Oh, you missed stupid. that one. You missed that one. <laughs> you missed Too that late. one. No, no, Taylor had, a, Taylor had a good one. Taylor, Taylor. Who? Ta name him, Taylor. No, say who you just said, Taylor. Say who you just said. No, say who you just said was a great black country artist. Who? Oh, we're talking about black people. No, she said Tim McGraw. <laughs> I knew it was black. I thought you just said country. Kane Brown, Jimmy Allen, <laughs> Allison Russell. Sorry, we just saying. Amis Kiai, Kaya. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Britney Spencer. Why you is know, it's Tina Turner? Shy Carter. There's a lot of dope black country singers out. So I wonder if T-Pain uh, still feels like that. But I'm saying all that to say, make sure you go pre-order My Black Country by Alice Randall, A Journey Through Country Music's Black Past, Present, and Future, the next release off uh, Black Privilege, Crap Privilege Publishing. Thank you, uh, Alice. What's the song you were shocked to find out the singer wasn't the race you expected them to be? Um, uh, man, I was just singing this shit the other day. Walking in uh, Memphis? Uh, no. What was the song I was singing on the radio, Taylor? I was just singing this shit, man. Color Me Bad was a... Not Color Me Bad. They wasn't all white, though. They was black, too. I was just singing this shit the other day. What was it? Oh, uh, are you talking about... It was a song about... I don't want no whips and chain. That song? <laughs> you were singing that song. You were singing that song. Taylor? Yo, you're something What race did you think was singing that song? So, I don't want no. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Who, who, what color? That's person? actually Jack Harlow, though. It is Jack Harlow. <laughs> I'm surprised Jack didn't get more smoke for Yo, that joke. Even though I don't that. think he should have got smoke, just in this woke era of everybody being so sensitive, I'm mad people wasn't mad about that shit. Yeah. Yo. Just because. That's white privilege. A black artist can't sing that. I don't want no whips. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> man, what was the song? I'm gonna be mad as fuck. I can't remember this. So I was just singing. It's an old song too that everybody likes, man. Uh, Bobby Caldwell. Yes, Bobby Caldwell. How do you know? I just looked it up. Yes. Yeah. What's the name of it? Uh, what would you do for love? What would you do? Do no, for love? No, he's got a few. Bobby I'll sing got it on a few. the radio. You tried everything and you won't <laughs> give up. I was just singing that shit. Soul, bro. I was what? like, damn, Bobby Caldwell was white. White people invented soul, man. You know what you really else I didn't about know was white? I didn't know Queen was white. But Queen cuts both ways, too. What you mean? They gay? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, but, but he's also Pakistani. Well, uh, he's no, he's actually, uh, he grew up in Zim, uh, Zanzibar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, he's yep, yep. Zoroaster, how do you say it? The, Zoroastrian? Yeah, Zoroaster. But he's from Pakistan or India? His, yeah, India. So yeah. I grew up, thought Queen was white. Which they are, but he's not. You probably thought they were black, right? If you I heard, thought they like, were black. Another one bites the dust or yeah, something. Another like one that. bites the dust. dust. Uh, doom, mm. doom. Another doom. one Anna, bites we dust. We will, we will rock. That's not them. Is that That's queen? white rhythm, bro. That's queen, right? Mm. Y'all hate. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought they were black. Y'all fucking. I hate. met them actually. I met them some years ago. I met uh, both of them. It was two. I don't know how many. Me, left. me Freddie. Yeah, one of them Before died, he died? Of fucking AIDS. Freddie Mercury. Yeah, yeah he died uh, of AIDS. Like 90. I met two of them then. Uh, <laughs> May, probably the guitarist. Big How many hair. of them? It's three of them. It was three of them, right? Four, no? Three left. Three left. It's three left. I met total. two of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Freddie Mercury, he's like, I mean, he's in Zanzibar. He's everywhere. Like, he's God in Zanzibar. Really? He's from there. No. Yeah. Well, he grew up around. there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they claim, they claim Freddie Mercury big yeah. time in Zanzibar. Yeah, of course. Yeah, big time. I mean, he's a beast. Like, that band is incredible. Let's talk about, uh, huh? Do I have what? Like, surprise that I, wait, that I was shocked? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh. Uh, well, art, was, you said it was artists that you were shocked were white? Yeah. Kanye West. No, I know <laughs> Kanye is white. <laughs> no, no. Um, I was shocked at uh, uh, the performers of uh, the Ceasefire Now song. Oh, my God. I was shocked to find out they were white. It, I couldn't fathom that, that they yeah. were just white. Michael McDonald. Yeah. I kind of knew Michael was white. Really? But what's the song? Yeah. Uh, Keep forgetting. Keep forgetting. Oh. Yeah. Keep, Keep forgetting. He's white? Damn. Yeah. Is there anybody See, not I thought that was white? black, you too. Know what? I never thought, I never Name thought he was black. Name someone not white that makes good music. Because at this point, I'm like, I think we're the only one. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody had only wild one. soul back then. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah. We invented soul. Y'all did not stop. Who invented it? Y'all copied on, off of John us. B., I thought it was black. Nah. nah. I mean, I saw John B. Phil Collins, I thought was... Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> Phil Collins. I thought he was Asian, actually. I could see you coming yeah. in the air tonight. <laughs> he, 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 he thought he was black? <laughs> yeah, I did. Of course! <laughs> he did the Lion King soundtrack. <laughs> Phil Collins? Duh. Oh, yeah, Zimbabwe. Yo, Wait, what? what? No, that's me. You didn't Hold know on. White did the whole Lion King soundtrack? He did. You, he did know Phil Collins did the Lion King soundtrack. Oh, I thought it was in Elton John. Elton whatever, John. Whatever. Yeah, I thought it was Elton John that did the Lion King. I no. Thought... Elton I John didn't do Phil the Lion Collins. King soundtrack. Yo, it was Phil, Phil Collins, Collins, man. In the jungle. You ever heard the remix the of uh, uh, the song, the collaboration that Elton John and Phil Collins did? No. What is it? And I see it coming. You didn't see that shit? <laughs> <laughs> you never seen that shit? I see it see coming, coming through the air the night. He's like this. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> He's waving people off. <laughs> free catch. Free catch. <laughs> Phil was kind of a freaky song when you think about it. He said, I see it coming. I can feel it coming. <laughs> God, what is that song about? You know it's about. Google what that song is about, yo. These songs be having some freaky ass hidden messages that we don't know about. It's not yo. even hidden. They're out in the open, bro. I can see it coming in the air tonight. In the God, air tonight. Damn. That means you was laying on your back and she was on top of you going crazy. And then uh. she got up and then that shit just squirted. You like, oh no. I can see it coming in the air tonight. Look at them lips, too. That's how you know you. <laughs> they don't have no lips. That's how you know you're white. Thick lips. You got them thick you know, lips. Alive? He got them thick banana suckers. He's still alive? Yeah. How old is he? He got to be like 80, 70. Years. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. He calls on God. Oh, oh Lord. Lord. Mm. 
<clears throat> what is the song about? Google I've is been about. waiting for this <clears throat> moment of for Merle? all of my life. A man who's Chris, great. get the fuck out of here, yeah. really? Oh, Lord. Wait, what's it about? Look, it says right here. Contrary to popular belief, the story that Collins watched is a man. Whoa, 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 Come whoa, whoa. Come on, son. Whoa, don't whoa, stop right there, whoa, son. Whoa, whoa. You about to... Man, I don't even want to talk about it. Nah, I'm good on that. <laughs> <laughs> what is this about? <laughs> this shit got too dark, man. Contrary to popular belief, the oh, story Oh, no, 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 I don't even read it. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> That's what that shit is about? Oh, it's not true. Chat. It's not true. Oh, it's not true. Yeah, yeah, it's not true. Well, you read, you read, must have read farther down yeah, than I, I did. Yeah, I did read farther than you. First of all, if that's what you witnessed, why the fuck didn't you do something? Why was you just standing there watching? <laughs> well, if you told me you were drowning, I would not lend a hand. I've seen your face before, my friend, but I don't know if you know who I am. Go ahead. Well, I was there and I saw Collins, what you did. I Collins saw it with my own two eyes. So in you interview. can wipe off that grin. I know where you've been. It's all been a pack of lies. Collins said in an interview they didn't write it with anything particular in mind. He was dealing with a recent divorce and he was very angry. Also, the lyrics were completely spontaneous. Oh, Fuck out of here. Nah, he sure, bro. He this shared a real story on Jimmy Fallon. Let's hear it. Oh, he white, white. <laughs> That's AI, bro. That guy's not white, dude. That's AI. That's a black man. Look at him. That's AI, like, bro. Look at the commercials are black. <laughs> Everything is black. Uh, That's AI, Collins, bro. That's bro. Phil, She's Uncle beautiful. Phil, Collins, black ass name. <laughs> Collins. Who lives on Collins Street? Black people. <laughs> Look at this. Even the way he's sitting, black as hell. Polo <laughs> so unbuttoned on black. <laughs> Wrote a book, black as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Album, plays drums, black. You need rhythm to do that. All right, shout out to Phil Collins, man. You know what I mean? Not incriminating himself, you know? He's like, man, I was just mad as fuck. He's been That's around, all. bro. <laughs> let's, uh, He's been around. Let's talk about uh, the good brother Shannon Sharp. Salute to Shannon Sharp. Yo, he saw the light, man. Shout out to Uncle Shannon. We love you. We appreciate you. I'm glad that you're seeing the reality of the world. I'm glad that a lot of people are open to the reality of the world, especially Taylor. Let's hear what OG okay, so Shannon Sharp had like, to say. So you didn't feel the type of way that he basically... So let's play the clip for Salute to Shannon Sharp, too. Shannon Sharp and uh, Ocho Cinco. Salute to y'all with the them, nightcap. Man. That's your eyeball. Let's, okay, let's let's put this to context before we play it. Hold on, what was the headline, Taylor? This is Hollywood Unlocked. Salute to Hollywood Unlocked. My man Jason Lee running for councilman in Stockton. Uh, Shannon Sharp says Beyonce doesn't move the needle for the NFL like Taylor Swift. God damn, God damn. <laughs> play the clip. Play the clip, Taylor. Same Ocho, feeling. Ocho, yes. I love Beyonce. Beyonce ain't moving the needle like this chick. Ocho? No. What? You no, tripping. you tripping, Ocho. This girl, this ass the chat. That's a black t-shirt, bro. thing to move in the needle like my Jackson. This is it. Whoa. I, Ocho. These eight, you got your eyeballs. She's got a t-shirt that says, sorry I'm late. Let's go. That's Jamaican, bro. Ocho, I love Beyonce. Beyonce ain't moving the needle like this chick. Ocho? No. What? No, you. All right, listen, man. Listen, we've already exhausted this topic on Brilliant That's, Idiots. Yeah, we don't have to harp on it. I, people are saying, oh, he stole your take. You can't steal the truth. The truth exists. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is the White House white? It's white. And I, I didn't say it first. It was a little bit, but who, what, what it says, Jelly Roll tries to go. I didn't see Jelly Roll say that. Jelly Roll said that? I thought Shannon Sharp said that. I thought Shannon yeah. Sharp compared Taylor to MJ. No, Jelly Roll was just asking a question, the same thing. Oh, yeah. which which also, Andrew said that. Oh, of course, you know, yeah, last, yeah. Last year. Shannon said that, that you know, he, uh, she is the closest thing we got to MJ. He's right. He's seeing the light. That's all the thing is. He's seeing the light. I don't think light. anybody's close to MJ, bro. Well, really? Y'all need to watch MJ's documentary on fucking... Um, She's what's the docu- closest what thing that? to what, moving the needle like that on, Michael Chris? Jackson that we've seen. That's what she says. That's the 40th what Thriller? Said. Huh? He's not, though. But she is, though. No, man. MJ was an anomaly, bro. MJ, there's never... I've never seen anything that like MJ. When we talk about comparing people to MJ, you only can bring up Jesus, bro. Tell them, man. When Jesus was alive, people didn't even like him. They didn't like MJ either. Yeah, they did. Well, they did, I guess. He sold 100 million records. Well, are y'all only basing it off of the numbers, not like the- Man, I'm basing it off the way they used to treat MJ. Michael Jackson was different, bro. Nah, but they treat Taylor like this, you, man. They treat Beyonce really. like that, too. No. Nah. No, they don't. 
I love Beyonce too. I'm a, I love Beyonce. Here's the thing: I'm not having this debate no more because it's silly at this point. Beyonce you was know. at every Brooklyn Nets game. Nobody even knew. Yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Taylor goes to one football game. The whole world shuts down. I do have a theory. They're rooting against her. This poor girl. I do have a theory about the NFL and Taylor Swift, though. I think that a lot of people who already watch the NFL, yeah. their daughters are tuning into the NFL yeah. with the parents, with the father now, yeah. because Taylor Swift So she's creating family games. time. She's creating bonding. That's, yeah, yeah. And, and then we still hating on this girl. They say... She's being a great girlfriend. We still hating on her. The amount of criticism she, this girl gets. She generated 2 million female viewers. I, how, do they, how do they know that, though? Like, how do they know those 2 million viewers came from... They be making fucking, shit up. Uh, it's probably Taylor 5 Swift. million, bro. And I hate, I, hate the <laughs> fact that, <laughs> I hate the fact that last year, the, the Super Bowl had 113 million viewers. It's going to do the same thing this year. It's the fucking Super Bowl, guys. But it might it's be It's the more. most watched thing in America ever. It will be more with Taylor, especially with Taylor's involved. The thing is, that how are you going to criticize this woman? Supporting her men. That's what I that's what I don't understand. Because they haven't committed yet. Why are we making such a commitment to them when they haven't committed to themselves? Okay? Saw you on my side. When it becomes back, back. When, when it becomes, that, back. When it becomes Travis, my, whatever this was, I'm pulling that when shit. When it becomes back. Travis Kelsey Swift and Taylor Swift Kelsey, then let's get serious nah, about discussing bro. them. Nah, she's all supporting right? her man. Don't we all want to be supported like that? Don't we all want our girls to care about the things we do? Understand. Exactly, Siri. Seriously, I'm not sure she understands. Like, Seriously, I'm not sure I understand what the fuck you're talking about. We're not going to understand about. what Taylor going to say either, but just go, Taylor. Go, say that shit. I don't think people are, well, people are upset with Taylor, but I feel like people are more upset with the media because they keep panning to her. Well, they keep panning to her because people want to see her. NFL, I'm telling you right now, if y'all pan to Taylor Swift once during Usher's performance, <laughs> I'm with Cap, yo. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now. Yeah. I'm a so, fucking you, cat. You gonna beg for your job back over there? <laughs> 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 so, gonna, I'm taking a he's fucking on, knee. He's on both okay? knees now. I'm taking, please, <laughs> Mr. Goodell, please give me a shot. I'm taking a fucking knee if y'all <laughs> paying the tailor oh. at any point during Usher's performance show. That shit would be disrespectful as fuck. You think Usher's gonna play ceasefire now? No. By the by the Holland Tunnel no, game? No, no. You don't think you don't think Usher's gonna do his cover no. of Ceasefire now by the Holland Yo, Tunnel by game? By the way, I think what you notice, unless I'm I, I haven't noticed it, I ain't seen nobody in the NFL stand up for no causes this year. Not one. You ain't seen nothing. Like nobody in the NFL, unless I haven't been paying attention. I watch I watch football every week. I haven't seen nobody stand up for nan cause. They squashed that shit out real quick, yeah. Yo, do you know who created the uh the people putting causes on their cleats? Who? Brandon Marshall. Shout out to Brandon. Brandon Marshall. Did he, oh, did he put mental health on his cleats? Yeah, back That's in right. the day. He did he, he did it and they I think they they either told him he couldn't wear it. Or something like that, and then they ended up having a whole meeting about it. And next thing you know, the NFL was running out, uh, doing the whole cleat. The and cleat how thing. nice was football this year without having to deal with that? I mean, I enjoyed it. I, I, That's I, what I'm saying. I, I mean, it you, just let us focus on the game. You know, it's it's just, we're just able but to Taylor focus Swift on the game. won't let us focus on the fucking game. That's yo. on y'all, dick riding her so much. She's so <laughs> bad. dick riding Taylor. They are Leave dick Taylor riding alone, Taylor, yo. Man. She's just trying to support her man. They are dick riding the fuck out of Bring Taylor. Bring families man. together, supporting her man, like this poor girl. It's unbelievable, man. The most famous Taylor in the world. Taylor made the name famous, yo. Like I don't even know any other Taylors other than Taylor Swift. You know any other Taylors? Nope. Nah, I, I mean Taylor is the biggest Taylor. Period. I'm Here's the reality: like, Taylor is even the Taylor whitest white clothes. girl name ever. That's the thing. You think so? After Taylor Swift, Taylor became the whitest white girl name. You're right. If you're you right. name Taylor, you pretty much a Caucasian right. person. Honestly, <laughs> if you're a, if you're a black Taylor, yeah. there shouldn't be an apartment you can't get in New York. If you pick up the phone and call and be like, "Yo, my name is Taylor," they don't even care what your last even name is. Even if your last name is Jenkins or Jackson, something like that, they Jefferson, don't matter. You're white. Nah. You're white. Taylor, you ta you a Taylor? You're a Taylor. You you top notch, top of the food chain. Yeah, you really are. Yeah, I mean honestly, if you can't get what you want with the name Taylor, you just suck. Yeah. Um, Low key, that's facts. Um, Fucking bunch of crackers running around. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. What cracker? Don't look at me like that. Excuse me. Oh shit, Taylor. Yo! Oh it's shit! So oh, y'all are showing. Whoa. I forgot like I about you, you. Y'all yo. showing your age. That was the most what? corniest what? dad joke I what? ever even. What was the dad, dad joke? So dad joke. Corny. What was the dad that joke? So corny. Oh, you're being a real dad joke. That was mad corny. Right. Okay, like okay. 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 I wasn't gonna do it. I wasn't gonna do it. I wasn't gonna do it. I want you to try again. Tell the people what you asked the GYN. 
I didn't ask shit. Yeah, she did. <laughs> no she way. Asked, I didn't ask she shit. She fucking asked. Yo, she Charlene, fucking Charlene, asked. Charlene, God be watching you. Why she do you did. be lying no like way. that? The GYN. No way. Oh. And she came in excited about it. I have to. My GYN said, my you? discharge is honorable. I'm like, <laughs> How do you lie like this? No, no, no. God is watching you. You have to go home at night and you pray. Yo. And God is probably looking at you, turning like turning over. Man, God is laughing. I can see him in my head. Yo, I, can, God, I can see him in my head right that now. That lie was so, ridiculous. That was the lie. I thought he was joking, but the way you're getting defensive, I know. That is crazy. Real. What was no. the lie? Hey. I can't believe you just lied. Like that. What was the lie? You're dangerous, especially when you was in high school or something. Oh my god. Yo, honky chew. Yo, that's crazy. White people are crazy, yo. White people are crazy. White people named Taylor are insane. Yo, you got white women. Yo, we got to start calling white women Taylors and not Karens, yo. Yo, for real. That was wild what you did to me just now. That was wild, Taylor. Yeah. All right, can you wild. do your little memes for the week, you honky? Of- <laughs> <laughs> that that, that well shit wild. hits, bro. Yo, I could, I could throw a honky out there. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Okay, what was this? I got a great this? honky. The Kanye? This was whack. Yeah, let's move on. This was really? whack. Yeah, let's move on. It was whack. It, I mean, like, you snatched the camera right, there, from the photographer. This one right here is what I'm talking whack. about. The woman can't fit in the airline seat. Let's have this discussion. This is good. <laughs> this is good. Because I got a different discussion. Yeah. yeah. Shit. What in the fuck is going on? It's What's her name? Grace Bond? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> what do you mean, why do we both have it? Do you see that? She's built like a funny mirror. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> do you see this she's clown like body that she's girl got? This is insane. <laughs> IG Gracie model Bond. Grace Bond. Oh, she's Gracie an IG Bond. model. Yeah. Shares PSA to airlines, request bigger seats because her butt doesn't fit. Is that her real butt? No, I don't it know, doesn't but look like it is. No, I'm sure there's plenty of dudes offer. I never heard of this woman ever. Come on, that's not her real butt. Is she Clearly. big? Is she like a big woman? I don't know. Is nah, she like it's white girls? Is she a plus size that's model? That's that honk. That's that honk. It looks white. like she was a big girl and then she just got like lipo or something. Oh, so she took the fat from everywhere else and yeah. shoved it right back in her ass. Here's the thing: why do genius? Why why do people <laughs> want the airline to get bigger seats? See, the same reason why you pay extra to sit in the front. So, so she should buy up. two seats. Yeah, she should buy more seats. Or seat buy seat. the first class seat. Here's and the then problem. you have a bigger seat. Class seat. That's the first class can't even hold that. You can't buy more seats <laughs> because if you don't check in for your flight, they give your seat to someone else. So you can't even buy extra seats. But then they do have some airlines allow you to buy the seat next to you if it's close enough to the flight and it's not sold out. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. That's an option. I just don't agree. I just don't like here's the thing. Like her clearly her body is not like everybody else's. Like, and I mean, there is nobody's body who's all the same, right? But, but there shit, is a, the airline fuck. makes these seats for like a range, fuck. Mm-hmm. right? That shit is, that shit is for I think she got to buy, <laughs> she got to buy an extra yo, seat. Yo, yo, Charlotte, let's just keep it a buck, bro. I don't know. That shit is for I don't know nothing about that. Yo, yo, come on, Charlotte. I'm a married man. Come on, yeah. I'm married too. No. I'm not saying I'm going to but someone got to get behind that. Nah. Oh my God! That's Taylor. You gotta dick. strap one on. That's gonna swallow any dick. That right there. Yeah. That's gonna swallow any dick. I don't feel like how big it is. I don't feel like a dick could be able to reach the pussy though. What do you mean? I what just feel you, like. What does her butt got to do with her vagina? Yeah, the vagina is underneath. I just feel like the butt's gonna block it too much. <laughs> she might have <laughs> a shallow vagina. You can lift it up. Get that shit out the way. Yeah, but still lift. I just stop oh. confusing Taylor about her vagina. Didn't we learn last week she doesn't know much about her vagina, yo? No. Well, maybe that's why it's so dishonorably destroyed. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Y'all made her an instant. Son, you gotta change this video. I can't concentrate right now. I want to be that <laughs> yeah. fucking yeah. salute to her, man. I don't. I don't know what to tell her other than you gotta get two seats. Like you, you know your build. What so, is her build? How would you describe it? Mm-hmm. I mean, she's just she has a build that can't fit in one airline seat. So if you got that kind of build, you got to get two <laughs> this seats. Guy, Yo, what what is she built like, bro? And stop playing games. I'm married. I know you're married. What does that mean? Pants are too tight, fellas. What's that mean? <laughs> yo, yo, relax, yo. What's that mean? So this lady was. Um, Juanita, Doctor Juanita Bynum. And that y'all gotta stop. Let me see. Pants too tight. Them the. Them little bitty suits is worrying me. 
them ones that have waters is cut all up in here too so we can count how many you got down there something is wrong little jackets that shoot little look like you just put on little ray ray's clothes or something and came to church i'm not hearing y'all talk to me to the point even your little dance scare me the way you shout scare me your knees too close to be a man wow oh, i'm not getting nobody to talk to me right <laughs> Maybe I gotta look down here on the monitor because let me get 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 tipping when you shout. Open up your legs and shout like a man. <laughs> <laughs> this girl's gay. <laughs> Why you mad? Yeah, yeah this girl's gay. Why you mad? Talk about us, yo. Let us wear our high waters. Let us wear our tight pants, you gay girl. Some pastors. I'm so, I don't understand crazy. what's going on. I don't know. Basically, pastor. this is church. <laughs> yes, Yo, she's church a is pastor. I, well, salute to Juanita Bynum, man. I don't know what the hell's happening there, um, but you know, maybe men wear too tight suits. A lot of times, when you see people with too tight clothes on, it's because um, they haven't realized they're gaining weight, and they think that it fits the way it's supposed to. Come and on, sometimes bro. they need a reminder from people like Dr. Juanita Bynum to let them know to uh, either get a bigger suit or lose some goddamn weight. That's my take. God damn, Charlemagne. What? There's a lot of disgusting <laughs> fat people out there that might be offended by that. Well, <laughs> yo. Buy two airline seats, God damn it. No, but. Um, oh, John can... Stewart returned to the Daily Show. Did we talk about that? Now, 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 now. I want to be celebratory of this, but at the same time, I thought that could have been your seat, my boy. He's only doing Monday. Oh, 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 oh. oh. I mean, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying that, that. That don't have nothing to do with me. I'm just saying John's only doing Monday. John's doing Mondays. He's executive producing. Uh, Tuesday through Thursday, the shows will be hosted by a rotating lineup of the show's correspondents who will share hosting. Dates. I think they should do Wednesday for John. Monday, no stories came out just Nah, yet. you got the whole weekend. What Monday's a great on the time. Weekends? Everything. Monday's a great time to start the week off. I well, just, Monday, I just what don't do you mean? like oh, that. Hold on. Oh. We're not going to move past that sentence. What? Monday's a great time to start the week off. Yeah. It is. That is when you the, set the starts off. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he says shit and y'all don't pick up and I feel, I feel gaslit. I feel gaslit. <laughs> Friday is a great day to end the week. <laughs> Just fuck you, dude. I don't know, man. I always thought Wednesday was like a great middle of the week for everybody. <laughs> man, you know what I'm saying? That's just my personal opinion. I think Monday's a great day to start the week. <laughs> <laughs> no man, I'm just glad John's gonna be back in the conversation. Um, you don't think that's setting it up like it's bad for the other hosts because everybody's just gonna compare the day John do it to the day the other people. Step your fucking game up. But yeah. I mean, step your fucking game yo, up. This, yo, man, if you it was sports, that's what it would be. Up. You, you, you don't, you don't tell other players on the team to hey, be man, worse. If LeBron drops 30, 10, and 12 at fucking 38 years old, you know. You, that don't mean that means you, that gives you a pass to not be great. No, you go out there and be great. That's what I. I mean, I would I would love it. I see John on Monday. That would give me energy. Like, oh shit, I know I how I'm coming. Love it. I would just put him on Wednesday, but I love it. I love it. I love it. I think that it's so cool because I asked John when I saw him once at the Comedy Cellar. I was like, hey man, I just got to know. Was there a little part of you that wished that you stayed on for one more year so you could have been there for a Trump uh, campaign mm -hmm. and a camp, uh, a Trump election cycle? That first kind of, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, no, I'm good with my life. I just wanted to do all my things. And it was time to retire. It was taking so much time. That being said, I wanted that. I wanted yeah, John yeah, there yeah. for a Trump. Mm -hmm. Election. This is a great year for him to be be, yeah. be, be back around. Um, and he only has to do one day a week. This is perfect. One day a week. And I think that, you know, we need more voices that we can trust. Yes. Especially in an era where you, this, this year, where you're going to see a lot of AI and a lot of misinformation. Like, I think it's good for American people to have a voice we know we can absolutely trust. And I mean, say what you want. John has always been very objective. A lot of people try to say he's more left-leaning now. I, I don't necessarily see it. I still see the nuanced, you know, conversation and him able to, to be able to be objective and talk about things from both sides. Um, yeah, I'm happy John Stewart is back. So check him out Monday nights on Comedy Central on The Daily Show. What day does he start? 
February what? February 12th. February 12th. Yeah, I'm with it. Um, what else we got? I feel like we're missing something. Uh, oh, Nikki Haley. Uh, How was Nikki? Nikki on Breakfast Club. It was a good conversation. Um, I enjoyed it. You know, I, I enjoy... I just enjoyed the conversation. She was there for like an hour. And how did it, okay, what, first of all, what are you asking her about? Like, what are your tough questions for her? Um, let me see some of the stuff that's currently going viral. Let me see, what was some of the stuff? She, uh, da, 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 da. let's look it up. Let's look it up, guys. Uh, one of the headlines I see on Politico, Nikki Haley says the Kamala Harris presidency should, 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 should send chills up everybody's spine. Uh, Nikki Haley calls Trump toxic and latest rebuke. They say this has been her sharpest criticism of him to date. Mm. Uh, Nikki, oh, USA Today just posted just five minutes ago. Nikki Haley weighs in on whether Trump mocking her name was racist on Breakfast Club. Nikki Haley says Texas can secede from the U.S. if it wants to, but isn't going to. That was ABC News. So, yeah, I mean, it was a lot of different things. That wait, wait, she said that Texas should secede? Well, back in 2010, somebody asked her about should states be able to secede, you know, from, from America? And she said, yeah, because it's in the Constitution. And then, you know, this week, Greg Abbott was flirting with secession, you know? And um, I just asked her, I said, yo, if, te if Texas was to do something like that over the border thing, right, because they're, they're upset about the border, if, te if they were to do something like that, would you use force, <laughs> you know, to keep Texas yes, we as would. part of America? Yes, she, Texas. No, she, well, she said you wouldn't. She said you don't ever use force on other Americans. I was like, I don't mean military force. I just meant like, you be strong about it. I think I did mean military force. Yeah, you did. That's yeah, you what did. forces. <laughs> yeah, did. and absolutely we would. We've done it before. South, in 18, it was South, in the 1800s, though. South, you going nowhere. 1860. South, you're not going nowhere, all right? You're if, not going no fucking where. But then if they broke away and then... It wouldn't happen. If they still sent migrants into America, now is that like an uh, international crisis? There's already fucking... Who did you say was there now, Chris? Uh, give him the mic. Texas National, Texas Rangers, I think. Say, get, grab the mic, Chris. Chris said Chuck Norris, them are at the fucking... Um... <laughs> I think Texas Rangers are already down there. Okay, so Nolan Ryan, Chuck this... Norris, who else? Well, here's the thing. They have every right to defend the border. Like, it is illegal that people are crossing the border. I hate this idea that, like... I hate, I hate this idea that people are positioning it as if uh, they're doing something wrong by defending the border. They're doing the thing that they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. We have a border patrol agency that literally stops people from crossing the border. Mm -hmm. Borders are what make a country a country. So it's not in any way racist, it's not in any way wrong to defend a border, that's literally what they should be doing. And if Biden is, is uh, hurting their ability to do so, then of course that they should object. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean. I agree. So then what's the deal? You don't want one branch of law enforcement or military pursuing one agenda while the federal military is doing another. But what's the agenda of the federal military? Are you saying they're trying to keep the border open? Because I don't like that either. Again, I like illegal immigrants, but make right. it fucking hard. Because <laughs> I just want the ones that really want it. I want a wall. I want a moat. I want fucking barbed wire. Texas Rangers. I want some arrows. Like whatever it fucking takes. Because when they get in, now we have, as Trump said, their best. Man, Schultz is like, fuck Grand Theft Auto 6. We need that goddamn uh, border. That border, border wall. That border, border wall one. That border wall border one. Wall one. <laughs> Border wall one. Make escape, it hard as fuck to get in. Yo, and that might be in, dope. That's it. Escape to America? A if, fucking video game? That's, that's it. And if you get that's in, kind of fire. that would be kind of fire, yo. That would be kind of dope. Can can we all agree if they get From in? The creators of Grand Theft Auto. That's it. But if you get in, you get citizenship. That's it. Escape to America yes. one. And then we take away any white homeless person, we take away their citizenship. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's clean. It's clean. Is that racist? No. No, that's that great. That's, that's you had every good. opportunity. You had every opportunity, Mr. White Homeless yeah. Man. Yeah. Okay? Unless you have mental illness. If you have mental illness, if that's If you have right. mental illness, you got to give him a pass. That's right. No that's mental right. illness. That's right. That's right. That's right. I, agree. I agree with that. You're white and you have rich parents and you're just cosplaying <laughs> as homeless. Mm. What about vets? It's going. 
That's mental illness, of course. Mental illness. Okay. No, I don't. Even even if it's not mental illness, I, you know how I feel about veterans. I you feel always got to take care of veterans. I feel the way America is. You give your life for the country. Up. That's right. That's right. We t we That's take right. care of you for the rest of your life. Free health care. You, you should get free everything. room and board. You should get a stipend every month to be able to take care of your bills. You Fuck give your that, life man. for the country. We take care of That's you right. forever. Bro. Free massage envy memberships. Like give you that. Like, take care of the fucking veterans. Gotta man. take care of the vets. That being said, if you have rich parents, no mental health issues, and you're just cosplaying as homeless. And white rappers. We take away, well, 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 well. Unless, you, unless you're crazy. nice. Unless you're nice, nice. Who defines niceness? Dr. Umar. You got to sit Dr. Umar down and say, That's Dr. Umar, <laughs> which white rapper yeah. deserves citizenship based off their lyrics? Based this, off skill level. This is a game show. Based off skill this level. This is a game show. Based off skill level, which white rapper deserves citizenship? If Dr. Umar does this game, he will have 27 schools around the country if he wants with the amount of money that he's going to make. Who gets citizenship, though? Let's talk about it. Eminem, he got citizenship. Of course. Eminem got citizenship. Any question about After that, it gets a little shaky. Okay, talk to me. Who? Name him. Is Post Malone a rapper to you still? Oh, he's got to get deported. If he's still rapping... <laughs> What if he's a rock star? Uh, if he's if he's transitioned to rock, cool. Okay, so he's a rock star. Okay, yeah. Lil Dicky. Oh. You're deporting Lil Dicky? No, 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 not deporting him. You're Mexicanizing his citizenship? No, 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 no not deporting him. Yeah. Dep you talk about just, just rap? Just detain him for a little yeah. while. Yeah. Detain, you'll yeah. Put him in the cages, detain him, put, put him in the cages. Put him in the Biden cages? Put him in the Biden Obama cages? Put him in the Biden Obama cages? Yeah, I can see. I can We'll get, we're going to get you in, Dickie. Okay, we'll see if there's we'll room. <laughs> we're going to see how much you want it. Can you break out of the cage? Now, we're talking about making TV shows, citizenship. But we're not okay. talking about that. We're talking yeah. about rapping. Just rap? Okay, uh, give me but, more. Okay, But we kind of need his rap for the TV show. Jack though. Harlow. Are we Mexicanizing yeah, him? No, no, no. Jack, Jack can get legal citizenship. Legal citizenship. Yeah, Jack don't have to go through the hardships of getting him. What you mean? Because he can spit is what he's He saying. can rap, yeah. I like Jack. Why, Taylor? Do you, you you don't you want to strip his citizenship? Jack, oh man, Jack! If it was up to Taylor, you'd be deported, bro. Yep. That's fucked. That's up. exactly yep. what you said. That's, That's exactly. fucked up. He's not a rapper. I just have to be a rapper. Why can't we just see other rappers? Taylor, 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 Yo, hey, play, Taylor, yeah. come on, pay attention Taylor, in class. Will you, will you really Taylor? shut your honky ass God up for one damn. second? Taylor. Did you just pay attention God in class damn. once? I mean, just once. Okay, okay. So <laughs> what black people are we going to take their citizenship away? What do they do? What do black people have to do for us to take away their citizenship? Mm. Also, mm. what do legal Mexican-Americans have to do for us to take away their citizenship? <laughs> I don't want to play this game no more. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun a little while ago. Yeah, like, Come on, yo. I know, it's not fun. It's not fun. It's just not fun. We're just getting into it. It's just not fun. God it's damn just, it, bro. It's just not fun anymore. We have any more ads? Alex? Yeah. Did you ask Neil? Nikki why she changed her name? Nah, because I she didn't change her name. Why do people keep saying it? Her name is like Nimrata or something No, like it's that. Nimrata Nikki Haley. Her middle name was Nikki? Yes. Like, why do we act oh, like... Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Are you sure? Yes, man. Yes. Her name is... Nikki is in her name. Yo, can you look that shit up? Because I think yes, Charlamagne just made that shit look up with his up, lying Andrew. ass. I think, I I mean, take I, your fucking I think they probably anglicized her last I name. I should take your fucking citizenship. Look it up, man. Look it up. I don't know. People act like she just changed her name. Like... It's like Ralph Lauren. Yeah, and then Ralph Rada Nikki Randa Waha Haley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, for real. <laughs> and then, um... Um, no, she was born... Nimrata uh, Nikki Ronda Hawawa Haley. No, no Haley. No, it's What do you mean Nim no Haley? Haley's our last it's name. It's Nimrata Rondawa. And then she got married to Haley. You right. said then Nikki is oh, just there you go. Yeah, there you anglicizing. Go. Okay, there yeah. you go. Her and then um Don't do that. He's talking to Shoop Doobie <laughs> Doop. What's, yes. what's Scoop? <laughs> was Shoop. Shoop. Shoop was saying that Nikki. Yeah, we just had a disagreement about something. <laughs> and then I said he goes, Yeah, there we go. Anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> no. Shoop said Nikki means something in um Little. Little? Something like that. Nah, that's not what he said. And what? In Hindi? Shoob. What does Nikki Chime mean? In, please. Yeah, it means small. It's like. Uh, okay. Yeah, because she was the youngest, right? Yeah. Yes. 
Like, why, where do we get this? This is fake news. Where do we get this shit from, yo? That's not what? fake news. It is. She changed her name. Like, yo, somebody called the radio station this morning and said, Charlamagne, you need to get on her because she's been pretending to be white all this time. I said, who said that? He said, Donald Trump. I didn't even know she was Indian. That's you. Maybe I'm from South Carolina, so I'm, you know, I've, I've been seeing her. So, I, like, this isn't new to me. Like, it was always a thing. First Indian American governor, mm -hmm. you know, it was always a thing. It was never not a thing for us. Like, I'll be honest, I don't think she's Indian enough. <laughs> I want her to be more Indian. I wish she would lean into the Indianness. Mm -hmm. Run, hey, run ISO, man. Go. I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> Charlamagne, I'm just saying. Do you want another white lady from South Carolina? Uh, I don't care at this point, man. At this point, I just want somebody reasonable, bro. I want somebody reasonable. And when I say reasonable, I'm talking about reasonable in regards to logic and reasonable in regards to age. Oh, you That's want... That's it. You're kind of ageist, dude. I'm not. Dude, if you're lucky, you're going to get there. I want to, but I won't be running for president. So I'm again? trying to be president. I'm fine. I want to get there. I want to be 80 you? plus years old. Can Yo, you be president? Can you even vote? Yeah, I voted. Listen, here's the thing, right? With, 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 with President Biden. And Aren't I really you, be thinking uh, about this. Black or whatever? Like, what's that about? <laughs> Here's the thing about President Biden, right? Do they allow that? Like, but why so, so would you want to be so. president at this point in your life? <laughs> These are your golden years. Like, because he wants the stress to level help. is too high. He wants to help. Yeah, but once you set that goal of, oh, I want to be president one day, it's he like. He did it. Yeah, but you got to. A successful president gets two terms? Not really. Not if your whole role was to be a placeholder. Not if you were supposed to be there it's for only. one term and then pass the torch to whoever else. Like, that's why a lot of Democrats are mad. That's the conversation that nobody's having. But that was like the unwritten rule. The unwritten rule, the unwritten plan was you're going to do one term and then you're going to be out. Oh, and Biden doesn't want to be out? Nah, because it's, it's, it's all legal at this There's point. There's no way he actually still wants to do this. It's all legal, I think, bro. What Wait, you think, for Chris? real? I think that they go, go, Chris. You fucking know things. Fuck you. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Sorry, that was hard. That was hard. That was hard. That was hard. I was a little hungry. How do you right get so much props? I got a little hungry. How do you get props and yeah, curses yeah, on in yeah. one sentence? Fuck you. You fucking bro. know things. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> damn it. Sh shut up. I, okay? I'm a little, I'm not sure now. Fucking love you, Taylor. <laughs> what do you think, Chris? <laughs> love you, Taylor. I don't know. I mean, my <laughs> Taylor, chill out, dude. Chris, my father's, oh, come my on. father's the same age as Biden. He Would looks, you want him running for president? He looks like Biden. I think he could pull it off, but I think it See, would. Biden. He does. He actually, my parent, my kids call him Biden. He what does your dad think about the sneakers you're wearing today? How, how does he, he feel them. about them? How this? do you feel about them, though? I think that you're the fucking coolest goddamn guy that I know. Yeah, cool and I think you have the sickest sneaker, the sneaker collection, the sneaky, sickest sneaker yeah. collection of anybody. On that side of the camera. I, well, <laughs> oh, fuck it. No, no. Of anybody in this room. Of anybody in this well, room. I appreciate that. It, yeah, I, I put a lot of, uh, you know, talking about getting old, it's very difficult to dress as you're getting old. Because if you don't try, then you're just the old guy. Yeah, but nah, you're just you're subtle, nah, nah, and then nah, you nah. kill it with the sneakers. Nah, you, everything else is subtle. You're not trying hard up top, and then the sneakers, you flex, and then it's just like, yo, I still got it if I want. When you get I'm to a certain to age, it. Chris, it's all about comfortability. I don't give a fuck. It's all about being comfortable. You're wearing Can't. Timberlands. You're not even doing a This is comfortable as shit. He's a comfortable. He's a comfortable as shit. Everything I got on is comfortable. I feel like I don't got no underwear on right now, but I do. That's how comfortable I am. I got on Ethica underwear, which is so comfortable. It mm -hmm. makes you breathe easy. And I got yeah. on a nice, loose-fitting sweatsuit with some Tims on. This is, takes no effort. I know I'm a fashion icon, and it looks like I put a lot of effort into what I do, but it's all about comfortability, guys. You look like you're ready for back shots. <laughs> <laughs> Not like this. It's just straight laying down. Get on top of your, your business. Can I say one thing on the Biden thing, though? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the age. This is the best case I can make. All right, go. He's been doing this his entire life, right? Politics, Washington, in the corridors of power, negotiating. So we'll stand up be hard for you when you're 79 or 80. It's easier because it's all you know. Yeah, yeah, but, he had, but he has no real connection with real people anymore, man. Well, but that's true of everybody. Every politician. No, I agree. I agree with that. Donald Trump's never met a real person in his life who didn't work for him. No, I, I agree mean, with that. Like, so what? My thing is, what would be an impossible lift for most people at that age, I think is lighter for him because it's his entire life. I hear what you're saying. It's like- That's the best I can yes, say. Yes, 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 yes. You're not worried about it aging him or right. taxing on him. And also he's being handled, right? He there loves other this people. shit. Yeah. He eats this shit up. It's all Also, let my man take a vacation. Like right. every time he's on the beach, they're like, he spent his whole time on the beach. Being in the White House, 
like I, I stayed at a hotel that was like across the street from it. You can't really go outside. Right. Like you literally can't when we're in DC, like you cannot go outside because other people are in buildings that can look down into the White House. Mm. Like I'm not saying I would have done anything, but someone else could have. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just locked in this little jail. You walk around the gardens or whatever they're called. I could look into the gardens. The Rose Garden, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Things in the Rose Garden. Huh? You can see the Rose Garden. See everything. Somebody said that, uh, I don't know if it was Vivek or, or somebody, but he, on the pod, they were basically like, the, the managerial class or the institution or whatever you want to call the powers that be that really run American government, right? Don't really care if it's Democrat or Republican. They really care that they're going to go along with the greater vision of America, which is, hey, if we need a war, we go to war. If we need to destabilize a nation, we destabilize a nation. If we need to sell some weapons, we sell some weapons. They don't really care if it's uh, Obama doing it or Bush doing it or Clinton doing it or Bush Sr. doing it. They don't really care. Trump represents someone outside of that system that they can't yeah. exactly control. Nikki Haley obviously is someone within it. Biden is also someone within it. Career in it. Exactly. So they don't, what, what they basically said is sometimes they just shift the attention to a different party. So right now it's Nikki and Nikki would essentially serve the same uh, agenda that Biden would serve internationally. Are Trump? Well, they to a certain extent. They're saying that Trump won't play ball and that's why they don't want that. And that's what I believe. I believe that people that are supporting the Don Donald Trump like when you look in New Hampshire and Iowa and you see Republicans that are voting for Nikki and, yeah. and instead of Trump, I really believe they just they they they're tired of the chaos. Yeah. They're tired of the, the disruption. They're tired of all yeah. of the noise. They yeah. want to get back to just something stable. Yeah. Well, but, you I think the instinct to be attracted to Trump makes sense. I understand it. Yeah, if you like is, taste the movies. Trump has one agenda. Trump. It's called Trump. Yeah. <laughs> and if you look at his history, he gets what he wants out of situations and he leaves it in ruins. And that's what he's going to do with the country. Trump's goal is whatever's best for Trump. It's not what's good for Americans. It's not what's good for mm. Democrats or Republicans. What's good for Trump? I don't even think it extends to his kids. I think uh -huh. it's like, this is what furthers me in this situation. And if saying something that people will interpret one way or think I'm fighting for, he'll say it for anybody. But, I mean, study the guy. Yeah. Look what happens to things that Trump's in control of. No, nah, you're right. You're right. Now, can I ask a question? Uh -huh. uh, what's the beef between Megan the Stallion and uh, Nimrata Minaj? I, I really don't know. I have no idea. I just think it's silly at this point. You know what I mean? Like, listen, I'm hip hop, so I love a good, you know, back and forth. But I want things to stay on records. And what I mean by that is, I, you know, back in the day when we would say that, we were talking about taking it to the street, right? This ain't going to go to that level. What I mean nowadays when I say keep it on record is, man, don't tweet through it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear all these Instagram lives and Twitter spaces and all that. Where is the bars? You know what I mean? Where is the music? And Nicki did give us a record, but it was eh. Oh, really? Yeah, to me. Did you hear? Yeah, I heard it. What'd you think? Mm, the same. But I thought both records were. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I thought I thought Megan's I thought Megan's was was better. Um, and I thought Nicki even had some bars in her record, but I think the fact that she tweeted most of her bars before we heard them. You know, it it took away from the uh, of it all. And then that, just the whole, when you start talking about somebody's dead mother, man, it's like, come on, yo. Like, you, you're Nicki Minaj. You are one of the greatest, if not the great. Well, first of all, you're one of the greatest rappers ever, right? But then you're clearly one of the, probably the greatest female artist ever if you put in the whole totality of everything that she's accomplished, right? I'm not just talking about lyrics and skill level. I'm talking about everything. She's probably the, the best ever. And it's just like, you got to stoop to that. Mm -hmm. Talking about somebody's dead mom? Like, why? And Nikki, what, do, what do you say to her saying that, well, she talked about my husband? That's not, come on, bro. Like, I mean, yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah, about that, my it, family. And by the way, I mean, it, he's here's, convicted. Here's the, here's the illest part that no, Megan I'm did. I'm just saying, if you're going to talk about Megan family, gave then. Megan one subliminal line, right? Exactly. She gave one subliminal line, didn't say no names, no nothing. Mm -hmm. And just put it out there. And then called the Breakfast Club and I said, are you naming names? She said, no, but all the hit dogs gonna holler. 
and Nikki has been tweeting and talking on Twitter spaces and stuff for seven days, mm -hmm. bro. Seven days. So Meg was right. One line got you doing all of that for seven days to where you bringing up people's dead mom? I don't, I just, I don't know. I just think, I, I think too highly of Nikki as a mm -hmm. artist to see her to see her moving like this. Do you think she's a little unhinged? I mean, I don't know if it's unhinged. I just don't know. Like, she had, first of all, Nikki just put out a great, great album. People fuck with the album. She's selling a lot of records. She about to go on tour. It just feel like she should be above this. And if you are gonna engage, you gotta give us. You gotta do it the way Drake did it, Joe. Which you know is you gotta go back to back. You, you gotta give us some shit. Mm. Yeah. Drake gave us charged up. Drake was gave Drake gave us back to back. Drake yeah. gave us some great records. Mm. Drake, Drake gave us a phenomenal moment when he got tested. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And 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 you know, Nikki, there's a lot of people who have come at Nikki over the years. She hasn't really responded. She didn't respond to Lotto. She didn't respond to Remy Martin. And she gave, you know, Kim like a few bars and she did the whole raggedy thing. So it's just like, if you're gonna give us a song. I was I was just expecting some shit from Nikki. That's all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you didn't get it. I didn't get it. Now I'm just getting a bunch of tweets and Twitter spaces and barbs being upset and this and that. Like that's not what this that's not that's not what this should be about, man. So I want everybody just to get back to the music at this point. Cause here's the thing, May, you put out a great record. Megan's Law, right? Like it's this cool record. It, it did what it was supposed to do. But now you have to do what Nikki has done, which give us a great project with some great singles. Give us a real project with some great singles. You gotta capitalize on this moment, you know what I mean? I would, I think Meg has handled it perfectly thus far. You put out a record, you don't say nothing, you ignore all of the shit that's coming your way because there's been a lot of shit. People going to her mom's grave site and all of that, you, you, you ignore all of that. The next thing we should hear from Meg is a hit fucking record or a phenomenal album. That's it. All right guys, let's take a break for a second because first of all, you know the Super Bowl is coming up, so we got to get our picks in. We're going to make some big bread with prize picks. This is very simple right here. Prize picks make it incredibly easy for y'all to get crazy money. I'll tell you why. It's basically a free offer, okay? They're putting Patrick Mahomes at 0.5 yards. If you think that he's going to throw more than 0.5 yards, that's an automatic lock. We're just picking one more. That's all we have to do to pick one more. Pick 10 more. Pick 20 more. But if we pick one more and we do win... We're already going with that Patrick Mahomes 0.5 yards. We know that. I think we go Kelsey for the more. I think we go Kelsey for the more. They're saying he's at 72 and a half yards. I think he's getting more than that. His girl's going to be in the stands. America's watching. You know he shows up for the big game. I think we're going more on that. Patty Mahomes, 0.5. We're going more, obviously, okay? And we're going Travis Kelsey. And here's the reality. Um, you can win up to 100 times your money. With as little as four correct picks, you could turn 10 into 1,000. Demons and goblins are the newest, most exciting way to play prize picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. So now you can win up to 100x your money with as little as four correct picks. So you go there, you play alongside Meek, you know what I mean? I'm out there. You can even find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from all the motherfuckers that you care about their picks. I'm telling you, go check out that prize picks community every single week. This is a crazy thing that prize picks does. It's absolutely absurd, but I love that they do it. Okay, prize picks offers injury insurance. So your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. So for football, basketball, if you have a player who exits the game in uh, the first half and does not return the second, that player projection won't count against you and the rest of your entry stays live. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. I mean, I mean, I love them. I just love them. It's as simple as that. It's very simple. Okay, I can make my picks and submit everything in less than 60 seconds. That's how simple it is. You also have the quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stats. Uh, these are the things that makes PrizePix the number one daily fantasy sports app. So this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna go to prizepix.com slash idiots. You're gonna use the code idiots for a first deposit match up to $100. You put 100, they put 100. You already know the lock we're going with Patty Mahomes. Add another, add a few more, get that money, look for the demons and goblins. You got this, and we'll see you next week. Peace. Podcast.
podcast was to hear from a regular everyday average person that you just related to with their content. They were talented, they were funny, they were smart. What Can we do some asking idiots? <laughs> 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 I, no. I just it was an interesting take, but I don't What is she saying? How podcast grew. She doesn't understand why celebrities <clears throat> Do podcasts, basically. Let's, let's Let me hear it again. Let me listen to her. Because Taylor really been talking about this all the time. I don't want to do that to I Taylor. Wasn't doing that. Let's say, you didn't say, you just started playing it. I was, yeah. I was watching the Usher clip. Salute to Usher on Club Shay Shay. He was talking about how I gave him the name the domestic terrorist. That's because he is. Okay? Yo, we but we're happy that that domestic terrorist is getting his flowers, yo. Go ahead, get, you want to go ahead and take it? What? Oh, pause. Pause. You want to take yes. it. You're going to you let me have your chocolate. Usher coke. is a domestic terrorist, man. Salute to Usher, though. I can't wait to see you get your flowers at the Super Bowl. Amen. We will not let Taylor Swift overshadow you, Usher. The fuck we want. Not on my watch. The fuck All right, we want. Play the clip, so, Taylor. What is this? Basically, I was going on hey, Instagram, hey, hey, and hey. I saw this girl talking about podcasts. And since y'all are, like, one of the first... Well, what are they? Nah, say that shit. Y'all one of the first, like, big podcasts. Say that shit, yo. I just... Ten years strong. We on our 11th year. What's happening? Real idiots. Fuck with us. Loudspeaker. <laughs> okay. And seeing how podcasts have grown with like celebrities being on podcasts now. Um Flute to Combat Jack, to read. Uh so this she she basically is wondering why celebrities are doing podcasts now. That's all. Bag. Let me hear it. Hold on. Okay, you said from me because I'm in podcasting, but I'ma just say this. I don't get why celebrities have podcasts, right? I thought the whole point of the podcast was that an everyday average citizen was hearing from another everyday average citizen and they made niche content that was either informational or relatable, right? Like, if you want to hear from celebrities, you can turn on the TV or turn on the radio, but podcast was to hear from a regular everyday average person that you just related to with their content. They were talented, they were funny, they were smart, whatever. But podcasting was for the average person. It, like, am I right? No. So, What's her name, Taylor? Shout out um, to the young lady. I don't know. Her I mean, I want to give her props for using her video. I don't, you know. Um, Here's here, 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 here the thing. I, because why is better? Oh, it's more? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, I get what she's saying because, you know, uh, I I grew to love podcasting just because, you know, the, the traditional podcast were people who weren't necessarily on the radio weren't artists. It was just people who had something to say and they wanted to speak. I mean, I one of the first podcasts I got turned on to was Combat Jack. And then I started listening to the Reed. The Reed might have, did the Reed start around the same time we did, Chris? Uh, before? A little bit before? Around the same time. I used to watch Kid Fury on YouTube. So I get what she's saying. I do love those stories more. And what I mean by that is I love stories like the Reed. I love stor stories like Horrible Decisions. I love those stories more because these people didn't have a platform. They didn't have an audience. And to watch these individuals grow, you know, their platforms to become the voices that they are, I love it and I respect it. But I think what this young lady is not understanding is the reason a lot of celebrities have podcasts is so they can be normal people. Because celebrities are normal people. So when you have a podcast, it enables you to sit down in front of a microphone and humanize yourself to an audience who may only know you because of what you do on TV, what you do in film, what you do in music. Now you get to show them the human side. And guess what? I've grown to love that a lot. I think that there's no better podcasters right now than the fucking athletes. Yeah. I, think, I think all the athletes are making the best, are doing the best work. You know, Shannon Sharp. You know, salute to the pivot. Well, Shannon Sharp and Ocho Cinco with what they do with the nightcap. Shannon Sharp with what he does with Club Shay Shay. The pivot. Salute to Ryan Clark and Fred Taylor and Channing Crowder. All the smoke. Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. Like, that, I listen to that stuff more than anything. I listen yeah. to all of those people's individual podcasts more than anything. And it used to be a time where a lot of them just used to have athletes on. Man, some of the pivot's best conversations are, people with, are, are with people who are not athletes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I... I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not opposed to celebrities having podcasts in no way, shape, or form. If, if celebrities didn't have podcasts, the biggest podcast in the world wouldn't exist. There you go. <laughs> Joe Rogan was a celebrity, y'all. You know? Facts. And guess what? I would have never thought all of those years ago the guy who was in the UFC and was watching Fear Factor would be a place where I would go to hear some of the most interesting conversations I've heard over the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know? I, I didn't know he had that many different interests and that many different things he was into. So I don't have a problem with um, 
you know, celebrities having podcasts. I'm, Not at all. No, I think you see a, a influx of celebrities because their agents are going, yo, I just got this guaranteed bag. Are you down to talking to a microphone for an hour a week? And they go, yeah, I'll do that. And then we'll set it all up and you just talk in the mic and then this is your guaranteed bag. You know, okay, I'll do it. So I think you see an influx of maybe celebs that actually don't really want to do it or care to do it, but they just think it's another thing, another revenue stream, et cetera. But in terms of just celebrities in general, I think what Charlamagne said is absolutely perfect. Like there's so many. And especially when you get to see some celebs from industries that we don't hear a lot about the uh, the inner workings of, which That's is right. sports. Like sports, we don't hear a lot about it. Right. We know it so well, but we don't know what goes on in the locker room. They're telling locker room stories, and it's awesome. That's right. So These guys make great content. Cam amazing. And Mace, Cam and Mace make great oh, content. Amazing. You yeah. know what I mean? Nori, Drink Champs, they make great content. Like, you know, like they're good at what they do, and I think that's the biggest thing. Shaq, Shaq podcast, the big podcast, they make great content. I think what people don't understand is everybody's shit ain't working either. Just because you're a celebrity, just because you got an audience, you come from a world where everybody knew you, that don't mean it translates to podcasting. So when yep. you see these people who do have podcasts and it's actually translating, it's actually hitting, yeah. salute to them. Salute to them. And, and the other, I'll say this too. I was I was thinking about this this morning just randomly because you know, I'm always thinking about this because this is our business. I really, Shannon Sharp has had a great uh, January. I mean, he's been doing extremely well with Club Shay Shay prior to this. The illest thing that Shannon's doing as a personality is the show with Ocho Cinco, and i tell you why. Anytime you're doing one-on-one -on -one interviews, there's always going to be a ceiling on that, right? Because you're not going to do them. You're not going to get the big interview every month, you know what I mean? And, every, like, right now it's a good window. Like, he did Cat Williams, and then 21 Savage came out with an album. Usher's doing the Super Bowl. Yeah. So that's January. You yeah. got that. But you don't know what February is going to look like. You don't know what March is going to look like. You don't know what April is going to look like. But the illest thing that he's doing is he's not just doing one-on-one -on -one interviews. He's giving you his personality with Ocho Cinco and the nightcap. You just like to hear Shannon. We've said that a million times. I always tell people you can't just rely on interviews. Do people want to hear what you got to say? Mm. The fact that people care about what Shannon Sharp has to say? Yeah. Uh, he's, Beautiful. He's, like, he's... he's He's bodied it. Like, you yeah. bodied it. And, and you're still giving him your day job because you're on first take all the time talking about sports. And that's the other thing, too. Don't ever forget what got you here. I've seen a lot of great personalities forget what got them here, meaning I'm a hip-hop. I'm a hip-hop yeah. radio personality. That's what I do every day. I love talking, still talking about hip-hop culture. Shannon Sharp is a sports pundit. He has not let that go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even though he's doing other things, you still see him on first take yep. every day. So that Absolutely. enables him. Let me go hear what he got to say at night with Ocho Cinco. They can talk about whatever. They can talk about Jess Hilarious having a nice body. Whatever it is. They can yeah. go talk about whatever. Then I can go watch him do a one-on-one -on -one with Club Shay Shay. That shit is the Fine. illest to me. Same thing with Ryan Clark. Yeah. I watch Ryan Clark. He's on ESPN doing his shit. On then, first take, yeah. then you see him on the pivot, yeah, having a whole other conversation yeah. about just being being men and healing and stuff. I love it. I love it, man. I love what a lot of them are doing. So, uh, no, yes, no disrespect, young lady. I understand what you're saying, but I uh, respectfully disagree. Let's let's get some asking let's idiots. Do some asking Taylor. idiots, Alex Media, or Taylor, 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 Taylor the Third, <laughs> Taylor the Third. Taylor right. the third, you know. The Taylor Bowl. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Eric Bavaldo says, why is Charlotte hating on the Taylor Bowl? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good question. Why yeah. are you hating? I'm hating because of motherfuckers like you, Eric, calling that shit the Taylor Bowl. It is the Taylor Bowl. No, it is not the fucking Taylor yeah, Bowl. It is. You have one of the most storied franchises in NFL history, the San Francisco 49ers. They got five championships competing to possibly win their sixth championship. You got the newest football dynasty we've seen, the Kansas City Chiefs. They've been to the Super Bowl four out of the last five fucking years. And you got Usher, Raymond, the fourth, performing at halftime. I don't give a Fuck about Taylor Swift being at the goddamn Super Bowl. That is not hate. I don't like somebody who has nothing to do with it overshadowing it. Yo, shout out to you, Taylor, and your bowl. When's we your Madison Square you. Garden show? May 3rd and 4th. What's the name of the tour? If Taylor's there, it's called the Taylor. <laughs> What's the name of it, Alex? The, the Life, life tour. tour. The Life Tour. 
Taylor, we need you at the Garden on May 5th. Yeah. <laughs> May 3rd and 4th. May 3rd and 4th. It's already sold out. May 3rd and 4th. She, right. she showed up May 5th the and Taylor, the Liberty are playing. The Taylor Swift. Wouldn't that piss you off, though? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, no, seriously. If Taylor Swift came to your show and all the reviews about your show are about Taylor. Nah. Come on, man. You knock it off. Knock it off. You, you open up. You, so, so, you, somebody tells you, yo, man, they talking about your show in the New York Times. Like, really? Yeah. And you open it up, but they're only talking about it because Taylor Swift was there. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Cap. That's Cap. Fuck you Cap. Out here. <laughs> fuck out of here. You can No, because when I'm performing in fucking arenas, because Taylor is at the show. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> They're about to announce you on stage. You're right there. At the, you're right yeah. there. Yeah. They're about to announce Andrew Schultz. And then all of a sudden, it's a commotion in the crowd. Like, what yeah. the fuck is going on? Because Taylor's trying to get to her seat. Nah, she got to get to her seat early. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't be fucking no. up my walkout. <laughs> Don't be fucking up my walkout. Don't be fucking up. And she's already seated. Okay. okay. You know what I mean? She's up at the thing. That's totally fine. Taylor's there. Yeah. Taylor's there. Taylor's there. People she got are, there late. People are, no, people are watching the show, right? She would never. They're watching. Too professional. They're, they're there. But they're not really watching the show. They're watching Taylor's reaction to the show. Ooh. And every single <laughs> joke, she's reacting like she's watching Joe Coy at the goddamn... <laughs> at the goddamn... What was that? The Emmys? Emmys? Uh, at the goddamn Emmys. You giving Taylor them jokes, bro. At some point, you're going to start shooting. I refuse. Oh, I'm going to shoot. At some point, you're going to be like, shoot. oh, you want to be, be the show? <laughs> you want to be part of the show whether you like it or not. Okay? Show it up when I'm walking out. You get there on time, and you go incognito. <laughs> Taylor comes to your show with a Theo Vaughn t-shirt on. I love that. Nah. That's a funny, that's that's a, that's a funny trope. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> you, would, you would do some shit like that. I would never like do that. no shit like that. I would never do no shit like that. That's my guy's night, man. I don't like people stepping on people's moments. And I'm not saying Taylor is. Taylor is Travis She's Kelsey's trying to support girlfriend. Her man. Yeah. It, it, by the way, this has nothing to do with Taylor. Taylor, you keep doing you. This has to do with all you fuck motherfuckers in the media. Okay? Stop doing this shit. It's not the Taylor Bowl. It's the Super Bowl, a great American tradition that we all are going to enjoy on February 11th. Okay? Yeah, I can't including wait to see Taylor. It. Including Taylor. Including Taylor. Um, oh my God, what's up with all these podcast questions? I'm not mad at this though. J underscore R7 says, what is the foundation of a sustainable podcast? Asking for me. What you think, Schultz? I think it's uh the chemistry. Hmm. I think it's a chemistry. Because if you're just doing it for money, you either once the money comes, you lose the passion for it or the money never comes and you're like, fuck this, I don't want to do this thing anymore. But if the chemistry is there, it's always fun. Yeah, and then everything else just feels like uh, icing on the cake. I say chemistry and authenticity. And, and authenticity just means that you are talking about what you want to talk yes. about. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like you're into... Like horrible decisions has their niche, you yep. know what I mean? Earn your leisure has yep. their niche. Like, and and the, the chemistry between a Mandy and a Weezy or Rashad and Detroit enables them to be able to speak about the things that they want to speak about. Yeah. Like same thing, yeah, brilliant. And then it's fun. It's fun, you know it's what I mean? It's and, and, the and easiest thing to do. It's the easiest thing. So that's what, it, I, yes, I agree with that. Chemistry and the authenticity. Chemistry is everything with any any of this shit, though. That's uh, the thing. This is easy yeah. because there's chemistry. Yeah. And if there's not chemistry, it sucks. And then it's probably hard, and it sucks. Yeah, you can't fake it. Like, you cannot exactly. fake chemistry. Chemistry is the one thing so it's that not, you cannot yeah, fake. Yeah, so it's not like it's hard to do, but it's because randomly there's chemistry. That's right. So it's finding the chemistry, I think, is the most difficult part of podcasting. That's right. In, in my opinion. And when you see it, you got to you gotta That's acknowledge it. it. Like, I, when I shouted out the Need to Know podcast last year, it was the same thing. It was like, yo, I, I'm, I, not only do I like their content, I'm, I'm like, this, the chemistry. The chemistry's there. You, when you got that, when you can see it, you can you can hear it when somebody got chemistry yeah. with them. You see it with actors sometimes, they're just great together. There's like certain people that for whatever reason, they just bounce off of each other perfectly. And you're like, okay, I want to see them in every single movie. You can be different characters. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You see it, I think, with musicians. You see it with like a producer and a musician sometimes. Like, for whatever reason, when they're in the booth together, boom, that shit's going to slap. So I think that's the thing that's difficult. And and then it looks so easy because it is. Yeah. Outside of that. It's, you're just being yourself with the person that you have great chemistry. 
I yeah. agree. Mr. Derek Jr., this is one of the most fantastic questions. This question right here is pure, brilliant idiotness. Would you rather sweat every time you tell the truth or fart uncontrollably when you tell a lie? Fart uncontrollably when I tell a lie. Because I fart that, already. Yeah, I fart uncontrollably already. I'm so, not losing So nobody will, be, nobody will think you're lying. Exactly. Like, they just Andrew think I'm being, being me. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, this is tough because I don't fart in my clothes. Sweat every time you tell the truth. You just want to sweat all but the time. See, I don't fart in my clothes. Yeah, but you want to sweat in your clothes? No, but if somebody saw me, if somebody heard me farting in my clothes, they'd be like, well, they didn't know that until right now. No, but they know. I, they've always known. Yeah, oh, but he'll, he'll be good. When does he tell the truth? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> would you rather sweat every time you tell the <laughs> truth? I would rather sweat every time I tell the truth. And I'll tell you why. Nobody cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. And most of the time when you see people sweating, you think they're lying anyway. You know how, we, you know how when you, somebody starts lying, yeah. yes. the sweat starts with like, oh, shit. So I would rather sweat because no one nobody believes me anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nobody, exactly. It's, no, that's a great question, but also no brainer answer. Yeah, nobody believes me. Nobody believes me anyway. And I tell you all the time, don't believe me even though I'm lying. <laughs> I hate this and guy. you should believe me even when I'm lying. So whatever. <laughs> Keep going down. Let's get another one. What else? We, damn. God dang, it's not like he was talking to a prostitute just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You got one more <laughs> in you? <yeah? laughs> uh, Naya Queen says, can we get Just Hilarious on Brilliant Idiots oh, when hell Andrew yeah. is there? I'm sure, I'm sure. We need to make that happen. Our good sister will be here soon. She'll be, she'll be moving to New York sh or shortly. Oh, this is an interesting one. Yeah. Charlie Marciano, uh -huh. based on how the world is today, which movie predicts what's coming next the best? That shit Barack Obama them just put out. What's that shit called on oh, Netflix? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I saw the that The Last movie. of Us? No, that's not no. The Last of Us. What was that shit called? Leave the World Behind. Leave, Leave the, the World, world behind. behind. That's what you need to watch, Charlie Marziano. That Dude. shit was wild. God, shit. For Barack Obama told us exactly what the fuck's going on. Which is? It's over. Invasion. <laughs> like, was that invasion? Is that what it was? They took over the like the. I don't want to say what happened. Oh no, no. I'm, I, I do want to read the. La I want to read the three. Hold on. Leave the world behind. We can end on this because this was good. Leave the world behind. Three steps. This is the three steps to the end. Yeah. Leave the world behind. Could it happen in real life? I want to read the three steps to disaster because this shit is so real. This is what exactly. What was it? That step one. Isolation. Uh, the movie describes that the first step requires completely shutting down a nation's communication and transportation methods. This ensures that no one has any way to spread information about yep. what's going on yep. and essentially traps everyone within their geological locations in states of hopelessness and confusion. Mm -hmm. Step two is synchronized chaos. This is evidenced in the film by the mysterious noise and the red pamphlets that silently harm civilians and spread misinformation. Step three is civil war. Because civilians won't have a clear enemy, they will theoretically naturally turn on each other yep. without the rogue attackers having to add any more fuel to, to the, the fire. fire. The three-stage destabilization maneuver of isolation, synchronized chaos, and natural evil is could absolutely happen. A hundred percent. So, we saw that during COVID, guys. Look at Chris. He's sweating. He's scared as fuck already. Hmm. Well, if you think about it, so... If someone were able to permanently knock out all internet and cable in this country. Mm -hmm. China. Just, but just think about the levels that that would affect us to. Hell yeah. Have to talk to each other and shit, probably shoot somebody. I think us older people would be, full, would be, would be cool. <laughs> us older people would be cool. Say what? We've lived that already, guys. Yo, no, we haven't lived funny. that. But nah, we, we, we know what nah. it feels like to not have phones. That's actually phones. a funny scenario. Like all these kids are freaking out. They're going crazy. It's like the purge for them. And we're just chilling having hypothetical conversations we can't Google the answers to anymore. <laughs> and we're just like, yo, this shit is fun. That would be we should have got rid of the internet years yes. ago. Life was so yeah. much better. Yeah. You're telling me Jordan was better than Bird? You can shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was, though. Now we talking. You know what I'm saying? Now <laughs> talking. You can't now Google shit. Talking. Nobody can Google stats. Oh, please, We're the last man. generation that could live in both. Because we yes. have internet, but we were here before it. Yes. So we are fluent in everything. Yes, man. So yes. bring it on, yo. Yes, man. Bring it on. I'm not China mad at not it. ready to have no internet. What are all them kids going to do? By the way, in the movie, you know the propaganda came from China, right? It was unclear. 
No, it wasn't. That's what the red pamphlets represented. Nah, that no, was a misdirect. The, the was pamphlets misdirect. was the misdirect you just described. You drop pamphlets oh. in a foreign language that's different than the right. country that's fucking with you. So all the people go, "Oh my God, we're being attacked by some Middle Eastern country." Nah, bro, what you say about what did you say when you talk about the G spot in the ass, bro? What are you talking about? <laughs> Whenever somebody <laughs> says you can nut by getting fucked in the ass, yeah, you always say propaganda. Why? I don't know, because that's gay as fuck. No, because you say that's gay people's way. <laughs> oh, that's gay people's way of tricking you. Yeah, yeah. That, if you was China, wouldn't you say that too? Oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh. You just drop the propaganda in a foreign language, which just happens to be Chinese. You know what I mean? And make you think of somebody else? Or no, if you're it was, right. No, it was, it was in, in the Arabic. language. Yeah. It I was, thought it was Chinese. No, it was, no, an, it was, it was no, Eastern. The movie was Chinese. Yeah, it was Arabic. No, it was like it was. Iranian or something yeah, yeah. like that. It was Arabic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just blaming everything on China, man. I mean, shout out to you for that. <laughs> like, that's fire. That's fire. I like that. I like that. You know what I mean? That broken clock is right like 12 times. At least, at least. Yeah, so don't worry about that. Shout out to you. Oh, man. Let's get another one, yo. You want to do and get another? Okay, let's do one more. Last let's, one. Let's do one more. Okay, uh... What would your last meal be? Nah, nah I don't want to do that. Okay. See, that was crazy. <laughs> we already did a butt joke. We just did a butt joke, guys. We just did, we just talked some butt stuff. Why? And see, they think it's me. All right. If Brandon you, and his listeners love butt stuff. Yo, yo. If you had to, listen, uh, Ito the Raf, uh, if you had to live somewhere in the world other than the U.S., where would it be? Nah, I'm going, you know, I ain't Gwilla. Easy call for me. I'm by Anguilla. What about you, Al? Uh, Puerto Rico. Um, nah. It's the U.S. Damn. <laughs> I think Aruba. Aruba. You would live? They got the best weather. Oh, no. Aruba's amazing. It's yeah. beautiful, but you might get a little bored. Uh, Chris. Chris gonna say Maine. Yo, son. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yo. I like, the, I like Spain. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I like Spain. Dropped the ball down on that one. Scotland? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Italy? Uh, yeah, like, like Italy I love. Uh, yo, low-key, like London is fire. I ain't gonna lie. The weather is ass, so I don't think I could do it. But yeah, like, exactly. it's just That's ass. That's the first thought, and I was like, But I Spain is great. Spain is Italy is great. Um, I like Ghana. I'm, I got property in Ghana. I'm buying more, but... Anguilla. I was thinking about this the other day. It's like, yo, what if... I think I could do Mexico, dead ass. If, if Mexico is dope. I think I, I could do Mexico. Do What if you live somewhere? I was thinking about this the other day, right? Because every time you think about living somewhere else, you think, oh, man, but what about the kids? But why put pressure on your kids to be successful? <laughs> like, why not just go live? You know what I'm saying? Like, why you do can't we... can't live without being successful. Yes, you can. I mean, if, if, if I do what I'm supposed to do... But if, That's true. Yeah, you know what like I'm you're in the position where you've already achieved it, so now you guys can live off of that success. Just go right? live. Like go, go, go get a beach, nice house on the beach, and everybody just live. Like when you go to the island, man, these people live amazing yeah. lives. They it never they works though. Huh? If you look at rich kids whose parents give them everything, yeah. yeah. It inevitably Create some sort of. But that's why you go there and you you open I, up I, something. I, you I open up a yeah. juice bar, you open up a beach. I shack. realize what the buffer is though. What? It is, uh, how do I word it? Basically, the more money you have and the more stability and security you have, the less uncomfortable things you need to do. True. And uncomfortable things often give you what you want. Going to the gym gives you the body that you want. Mm -hmm. Going on stage, you know, thousands and thousands of times. Sneaking into the border gets you citizenship. Gets you citizenship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing the uncomfortable shit is what gives you that success and it gives you that eventually freedom. And allows you to appreciate freedom. it because you know you put the work in. But when you have lots of money, you don't have to do those things. And then your fear for those things increases so much because you're like, I'm doing this for no reason. So I think that's what happens to a lot of those kids, whereas people who don't have it, and I'm not saying my parents didn't give me the most amazing life, but it wasn't to the point where I knew I was going to have to work. I know I was going to have to support right. myself and them. So we go, well, I got to go get this. It don't matter if I'm scared because I'm more scared of not having anything. I'm more scared of not having the ability to provide for myself and my family. That's terrifying. You remove that. 
You Life remove that pressure. Yeah. I don't know if it gets, I'm telling you, if you go to the islands, man, and you meet yeah. these people, they have such an appreciation for nature. They're fishing. They're eating fresh vegetables and fruits. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't have that pressure you're talking about. Like, I yeah. I, I had a partner, man, uh, from, from, from Anguilla, and he would always say, like, I think his, 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 his uh, child was born in Houston. Rest in peace, my man Shaq. And his, his son was born in Houston. And, um... They, they, they. He, did, he just didn't want his son to be raised in America. Mm. He wanted his son to be raised on the island because of the way he grew up. So they don't have the same mentality That's that true. we have. That that whole yeah. American dream. You got to be successful. Like, like, drive. They, they're, is, they're, yeah. they're, their their version of success is totally different than ours. And I respect it so 100%. much. And it's such a peaceful, easy mm -hmm. life. Like, yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not saying life is easy. Life is not everybody's different. Enjoying a sunrise. Enjoying a sunrise. Yes, enjoying a sunset. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. talking about. Like, going for a swim. Like, but we don't have that in New York. Like, no offense. It's You can do that when you live on one of the most beautiful islands in the world and you're surrounded by this absolutely stunning nature. Like, you can absorb that whenever you want. When you're living in an apartment building with 100 other families, you got people to your left, to your right, below you, and above you, and you're not looking at sunrise, you're looking at a brick building, of course you're going to be drawn to some other uh, metric to decide how successful your day is. So there is a privilege to be b being born in an absolutely stunning yeah, area. Absolutely. And, you know, maybe we look down at our work, we are, we're condescending or patronizing, we're like, oh, but they don't want anything. It's like, well, maybe you don't have to want when you have everything. Uh, we have to be caught in this rat race because we're trying to get out of looking at the brick building across. We're trying to get the sunset. They're already at the sunset. Or maybe we've told ourselves excess is more when the reality I mean, is that's less the is American, more. That's, look, how many grams of protein is in this Too shit, much. Right? That shit ain't even real. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you know what, what I'm saying? Like, but that's that shit how ain't many grams real. of protein can we put in a protein bar? God damn. That's what I don't know, man. I'm I'm at that point. Bro, they're my... putting shit in water that don't need to be there. Alkaline. Nah, I fuck with alkaline. But bro. that's what I'm saying. Like they got you on a water. Like water is water. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You got the electrolyte. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. they just find right. a way to put the more. Hey, this got extra water in it. Ain't nothing, I'm telling you, ain't nothing like fresh fish. But I'm, I'm also from the country, so like living off the land and shit is shit that I actually You're enjoy. You're to it, man. I enjoy going fishing. I used to run through the woods as a kid, you know what I mean? Yeah. Watching a goddamn buck get his fucking head split open fire. with a fucking bullet. Fire. And then you fucking eat that meat. That's fine. Pause, you know what I'm saying? You don't like, pause that. You know? <laughs> I love, I like, I like, I like living off the land. I like that type of shit. I just think we put too much pressure on ourselves to be successful. A lot of us city folk don't even know that that exists. Yep. We grew up in this, and the only way that we yeah. know success in this is by making enough money to buy one of those crazy apartments where you got a little bit more room, you got a little bit better By beauty. the way, which I think is insane. But we don't know anything else. spend millions of dollars on a fucking apartment? Bro, we don't know anything else. Yeah. <laughs> to spend, mi what, Taylor? What? Because you don't even know where I'm going with it. What? No, because I, I was having this talk with my friends. Like, even when it comes to buying a house at my age, like, I remember growing up, I felt like it was, I had to be married and all this other stuff, but you don't. You could be. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, oh, somebody's admitting defeat. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's admitting. Admitting what? Here. What am I admitting? Somebody come get it. <laughs> what am I admitting? What am I admitting? As always, you listen to this podcast. No, 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 no. You think we're smart. No, you think we're intelligent. No, you think no, we're brilliant. No, no, no. Let's go back to it. Right. But Let's go back to this podcast. You think we're just a couple of idiots. You don't know Let's shit. You're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiot Podcast. Thank you for listening. Rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. Rest in peace, Kevin Samuels.